Hey guys, it's Hogan here and I'm so excited for this video because it's taken me literally months to put this together for you guys. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys step by step how to build a $1,000 per month affiliate niche website. So it's a completely free course on affiliate marketing and how to start an affiliate marketing website. So the reason why I actually want to create this video is because there are already so many videos showing you guys different ideas and concepts on affiliate marketing but none of them actually show you guys how to execute on those ideas. And if you really wanna be successful with affiliate marketing and creating your own affiliate marketing website, it's not about the idea of it, right? It's not about the concept, it's about execution. So in this video, I wanna show you guys the behind the scenes process of creating a affiliate marketing website step-by-step -step and doing it the right way. So what's different about this video is that we're actually gonna be creating a real live case study website with you guys, and we're gonna try and take it from zero to $1,000 per month. So make sure you subscribe for future updates for this website. Now there's a lot to cover today, so I've actually separated this tutorial into seven different parts. So part one, we're gonna go through understanding and answer some common questions that people have. For example, what exactly is affiliate marketing? What is an affiliate marketing website? How it all works and how do you actually make money with it? Then I'll go through things such as why you should actually start affiliate marketing, go through some of the pros and the cons so you can decide whether or not it's for you or not for you. Then part two is we're gonna go through finding a niche and finding the best type of products to promote to earn an affiliate commissions. Then part three, we're gonna find low competition keywords and also profitable keywords that you can actually target for your website. So don't worry if you're not really sure what I'm talking about right now, I'll go through it in more detail later on. In part four, we're gonna go through website setup and design. So I'm gonna show you guys how to fully customize your website. It doesn't matter if you wanna create like a simple blog and monetize it with affiliate links or you wanna create an Amazon affiliate website or like a product review website or any type of website, it's fully customizable and I'll show you how to do that. Part five, I'm gonna go through content creation, which is probably the most important part of an affiliate marketing business. Then part six, we're gonna go through optimization. So I'm gonna show you guys the step-by-step -step process of optimizing your website so that it ranks in Google, right? Because you wanna make sure your website is actually ranking in Google so that you actually get people going to your website, clicking on your affiliate links. So I'm gonna show you guys how to optimize it properly on page and off page search engine optimization. And then part seven, we're gonna go through some final tips and strategies to help you succeed quicker. Okay, and I'm gonna be showing you things that no one normally shows you. So I'm so excited to begin. So make sure you grab a pen and a piece of paper, maybe get a coffee or some water or something like that. We're gonna get started right now. So part one, understanding and questions. So I wanna go through this part because I want everyone to fully understand exactly what it is and what it's not, right? And also answer your questions. Because I remember, you know, starting affiliate marketing and not knowing exactly what it was and, you know, how to actually do it properly. So what is affiliate marketing, right? So affiliate marketing is the process of promoting a product or service for a commission. So think about you as being a real estate agent and you are helping the owner sell a house. And if the buyer purchases the house, then the owner is gonna give you a commission for that sale because you've helped him sell the house, right? You've helped him advertise and promote the house and then you've sold it, right? So let's say for example, the house price is let's say a million dollars and you get 2% commission. So basically that's around $20,000 so that is your commission, right? So affiliate marketing is essentially the same thing, but online. So how it actually works is that you, the affiliate, you can actually sign up for a affiliate program, right? So you can actually join the affiliate program of many products and services that you have used already. So for example, on Amazon, they have an affiliate program called the Amazon Associates uh, program, where you can actually join and basically you can promote all the products on Amazon. So let's say for example, you wanna promote a coffee machine to your friends or your customers or your viewers or your readers, then what you do is you sign up, they'll give you a special tracking link, right? It's also known as a referral link or an affiliate link. And what that link does, it basically adds like a cookie or like a little tag, virtual tag on that link so that it basically knows, you know, when the customer actually purchases that, that you actually referred them, okay? So then, Amazon will pay you the commission. So for example, if the coffee machine is $500, there is a 10% commission, that means you earn $50, right? So there are many ways to actually promote your links, right? So obviously you can promote your link on Facebook. You're like, you know, send it to your friends and your families. Hey, this is the best product ever. And then you can send the link there. Or you could do like what a lot of influencers do on Instagram. You can do like click the link in my bio or um, use X, Y, and Z for 10% off and things like that. You can also email people. Um, you can also reply and, you know, comment on different forums and everywhere around the internet and leave your link. 
right? But those aren't the best ways to actually promote your affiliate links. The best two ways are your website and a YouTube channel, okay? So in this video, we're gonna focus mostly on creating an affiliate website. So we're gonna be focusing on that. So the reason why it's best to promote on a website or a YouTube channel is because these platforms are search engines. So people actually typing in Google, like looking for things, they're researching different products and services and trying to figure out, you know, is this product good or not? right? So there are thousands or maybe millions of products and people want to know, you know, is this product for them? You know, should they be looking at a budget option or a more expensive option? They also want to learn how to solve a problem, right? So people also type in, you know, how to on YouTube as well. Just like you found this uh, tutorial, you might have typed in how to make a website or how to start affiliate marketing or whatever it is, you are looking to solve a problem, okay? So on these platforms, people are looking for things. When we're talking about these different other platforms, for example, you got like Facebook, Instagram, or an email, a lot of times people aren't really looking for a, a review, right? They might just be scrolling on Facebook or scrolling through the Instagram feed, but they're not really um, in the mindset of purchasing something. But let's say when you're creating a website and your website's ranking on Google, then you know people are looking for that review, right? And if your review is on the first page of Google, they click into your website, they click your link, and then you're able to earn a commission. So it's a lot more natural and the conversions are normally higher. And so you're able to earn more commissions, right? So you're also able to earn a passive income because if your website is actually ranking on Google, then every single month, there's a consistent amount of people who are actually searching for specific products and specific product reviews or how to do certain things. Okay, so if your website is there, your website never sleeps and people are able to access your website from anywhere around the world. And that's how you actually generate a passive income. Okay, so what I want to show you now is just a real example of how it actually works and how do you actually make money from it and how much money can you make. Okay, so we're going to open up Google. Okay, so what I want to do now is just show you an example of how it all works and how much commission you can expect to earn with affiliate marketing and with a website. So we're going to type in NordVPN review. So NordVPN is just a VPN provider and a VPN is a virtual private network which basically just allows you to um, hide your IP address so that when you're browsing the internet, then no one can actually track your actions. And you can also use it to unlock Netflix of different countries because you can connect to a different sort of uh, server with a different IP address. For example, if I'm in Australia, I can connect to United States and I can watch the Netflix in United States. Okay. So I just wanted to explain uh, what it was. Okay. So generally, um, that's the type of content that you need to create when you're creating an affiliate marketing website um, because people are just about to purchase, right? So you can't just create any type of content. It has to be content where people are just about to purchase or they're in the process of solving a problem and then you're recommending them a specific product. Okay, so on the top over here is the Google AdWords results. So basically the company will actually pay Google um, for every click that uh, someone makes and clicks into that website, right? So that is how Google actually makes money. And if you actually scroll down over here, you can see the organic results. So you can actually see a ton of different affiliate marketing websites. And we're gonna click into this one over here. So let's say for example, you are reading this review and you're reading about it and you like it. So if we actually click on visit website, you can see on the bottom, that is an affiliate tracking link, right? So if someone clicks on that, that's gonna basically add like a cookie onto the browser and if they purchase through that link, then it's gonna track back to this website over here and the website's owner. So if someone purchases and grabs the deal, um, what you're gonna notice is that you can see the two year plan over here and you can see the price, so $89 for the first two years and without the discount is 286, right? So how much commission does this website owner actually make from a sale? So what we can do is go to the nordvpn.com website or whichever company that you want to promote and you can scroll down to the very bottom and generally what they have is a section where you got the affiliate program and you can click into it. So it might be called like partner program or anything like that and you can become an affiliate and then you can get a tracking link and, and add it onto your website. So we can scroll down over here. Now generally a lot of websites will actually show how much commission you actually uh, get paid. So for the two year offer, the owner actually gets 40% per new sign up. Okay, so we're gonna get the calculator out and we're gonna calculate it. So 89 times 0 0.4, so 40%. So that's around $35 per sale. Okay, and once 
they renew as well. So let's say, for example, um, whoever purchases this plan, they like it and they renew it for $286, then the owner is going to get a renewal fee as well. So it's going to be 286 times 0 0.3, and then they get paid $85 on the renewal. Okay, so that's how it all works and how you actually get paid. Now, the next question is like, how much does the website actually earn? So the website, um, it really depends on the type of content um, that you actually create. So let's say, for example, you create a random piece of content, which is not very, very uh, sort of targeted. People aren't looking for the product. Then it might be 0% conversions and you might not be making any money at all. But for this type of keyword, um, people are just about to purchase, right? So we actually need to figure out um, how many visitors does this website actually get? So you can actually use a tool called Ahrefs and for this specific uh, key phrase, it's actually searched around 25,000 times in the United States per month, right? And then the global volume is around 44K, right? So that doesn't mean this website and this page over here gets, you know, 44,000 people on the website, right? That's too much because uh, that's the amount of people who are actually searching for that key phrase, but it doesn't mean that they click into that, okay? So we can actually scroll down to the very bottom and we can actually find the website over here, a VPN mentor, and you can see the estimated traffic um, monthly visits over here. So it's around 5,200, okay? So if we get the calculator out and we do 5,200, and let's say one out of every 100 person uh, purchases, right? So just 1%. So we can times that by 0 0.01. That's around 52 purchases per month. Now it might even be a lot higher because they actually have um, the AdWord position as well. So as you can see, um, let's go back over here. They actually have their advertisement up here as well, right? So it can be quite high as well, but the, the traffic over here, this is the organic search results. Okay. So for example, 52 times 35, that would be about 1,800 per month for that specific page only. So what is really amazing is that, as you can see on the actual website over here, they don't just have you know one product that they're promoting, right? Or one keyword that they're targeting per page. They got multiple um, pages like NordVPN coupons, ExpressVPN, and they've also got you know different other key phrases that people are actually searching for as well. So this website over here is probably earning you know seven figures per year because it has a lot of traffic um, to the website. Okay. So, you know, it's really important to understand that you can't really expect to achieve these results, especially if you're just starting out. This is actually a very, very competitive niche because the commission rates are quite high, right? If we're actually talking about this product over here, this is actually like a digital product or a virtual product and the profit margins for this company is gonna be quite high and that's how they actually pay such a high sort of commission rate, right? So not every uh, affiliate program pays such a high commission rate, right? So if we look at the Amazon Associates uh, filler program and we can click onto here to learn how much do I earn from the program, you'll actually find the commission rates over here as well. So let's say for example, we're talking about the coffee machine, that's around 4.5%, okay? And we look at the most popular coffee machines, you know, it might be like $200 or something like that. So this one over here, um, let's do some calculations. So 229 times 0. 0.5. 0.45, okay, so that's around $10 per sale. So it's not as high and you don't get the renewal fee. So it really depends on what type of product that you are promoting and it depends on the conversions as well and also the commission rates on how much you can actually earn. And obviously it depends on whether or not you can actually rank your website up there and how many sort of pages that you are creating. So let's say for example, this is your website. What you'll have is you'll have separate pages for different products and different reviews and different um, pages for different content on your website. So each page is sort of like this little uh, rental property that you have. Right, so each product that you promote might have a different commission rate and it might have also a different number of people who are searching for it as well as a different amount of visitors that come to your website. So it's sort of really just like a virtual rental property. So it's gonna take you time to actually build up. Um, it's not like a get rich quick thing at all, um, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how to actually do it. 
So right now you're probably thinking, you know, is this even real? Is it too late? Is it a scam? And you know, are other people making money with affiliate marketing? So I know how you guys feel because I felt the exact same when I first started with affiliate marketing, right? I signed up for a lot of email, um, email newsletters and a lot of webinars, watched a lot of videos and a lot of people showed me screenshots of, you know, how much they're making with affiliate marketing, right? So for me, when I first started, I actually thought that a lot of people showed me screenshots of people who were actually um, like their core sales and things like that, the screenshots for the core sales. But I think a lot of people um, legitimately make money with affiliate marketing, right? They just don't show you. So this is one of the affiliate programs that I'm a part of. And yesterday we made around $70, right? So this is very, very real. Now I'm not saying that you guys can achieve this overnight, right? It's gonna take a lot of work and it's gonna take you time, especially when you're creating a website um, and ranking it on Google, right? Because you have to create the content and things like that. But this is very, very real. So it also depends on the types of products that you're promoting. Um, so this one is a digital product. So the commission rates are higher. So for example, on you know the 28th, you know we made over $100, right? And this is another affiliate program where it's uh, reoccurring commissions. So I made 11 sales, but there has been over 39 rebills, right? So every time it rebills, then it pays me another $40, okay? So every single month. So this is another affiliate program over here. So I've earned over 78,000. Um, so yeah, it's very, very real. So it's not just me and also, you know, other websites that you have not really heard of that is making money. So this website called Wirecutter, which was recently, actually four years ago, acquired by New York Times for $30 million. So if you actually search up Wirecutter and search up on Wikipedia, you'll see that they were acquired by the New York Times um, 2016 for $30 million, right? So if you actually go to the website, you can actually see um, it is primarily an affiliate marketing website. So it's a content website that does reviews on different products and they monetize with um, affiliates. So for example, um, over here, it says, Wirecutter is reader supported. When you buy through links on our website, we may earn an affiliate commission. So they actually generated over 150 million in revenue from affiliate programs. So that doesn't mean that they made 150 million, otherwise they'll be selling for like probably over a billion dollars. Um, but we do have to take into consideration the um, affiliate uh, commission rate. So let's say for example, 150 million. So one, I think that is, is that too many? Okay, that's too many zeros, let's do that again. So, yep, 150. And then let's just say, for example, they are selling physical products. So let's say 5%, that would be around 7.5 million um, from its launch, which is 2011 to 2016. So if we divide that by five, okay, that should be over 1.5 million or maybe even more than that, uh, 2 million per year in revenue. Okay, so affiliate marketing is very, very real. Um, there are a ton of websites that use affiliate marketing as a way to uh, monetize their content and youtubers also do the same as well so sam over here he's a travel and aviation youtuber right and he's also promoting uh vpns because vpns are quite popular since you know it's sort of like a product that everyone probably needs and as you can see here it's over four hundred thousand views so you can bet that he's generated you know thousands and thousands of dollars from promoting you know, the VPN. So affiliate marketing is very real. And this leads me to the pros and cons, which I want to talk about. Um, so you can fully understand exactly, you know, the positives and also the negatives of affiliate marketing. Okay, so let's discuss some of the pros of an affiliate marketing website and affiliate marketing business. So number one, you're able to earn passive income. So the reason why I actually got started with affiliate marketing was because, you know, my dad actually owns a restaurant in Melbourne, Australia. And Basically every single day he would be working every day, you know, and I'll just be at home taking care of my brother and my sister and we barely ever went on any holidays and things like that. So I was always, you know, searching up how to make money online and how could I actually make money while I was on holiday so I didn't have to spend, you know, time just working all the time and I couldn't, you know, travel and things like that. You know, so that was one of the biggest reasons of why I actually got started with affiliate marketing. So you're able to earn passive income because if your website is actually ranking on Google, it means that it's there, right? It's there 24 seven, anyone's able to access that um, anywhere around the world. And every single day, there is a consistent amount of people who are actually searching for your website and what you have to offer. So for example, if you're creating a coffee machine review or like NordVPN review or like, you know, different product reviews, there's a consistent amount of people who are searching for that every single month. 
and if they click it and they purchase it and that's how you make passive income and you've also got unlimited potential so this doesn't have any limit to how much you can earn so I remember working as a waiter at my dad's restaurant and I would get paid like 13 to $15 per hour and I would work like 10 hours a day and basically like the whole day would be gone because the rest of the day I'll just like be used to, to showering, resting and eating and just sleeping, right? But the rest of the day, the other 10 hours is just gone and I couldn't really earn more than that. So if I earn, you know, $15 times 10, $150 per day and that was a ceiling, that was a limit. But with affiliate marketing, there is no limit. It depends on how hard you actually work, right? The more content that you produce, the more you're able to make. And you're also able to work from anywhere in the world. So, you know, for me, I started to make, you know, over $10,000 per month from affiliate marketing in 2000 and end of 2016 and 2017. So I was actually able to travel and work at the same time. Now, I don't really recommend it if you're just starting out um, because when you're traveling and working, it's not as productive, um, but you can do it, okay? So number four, it's also very low capital and low overheads. So if you were to start like a brick and mortar business or even an e-commerce business, you know, at least you'll need five, ten thousand dollars to start an online business where you have your own goods and you're selling that, right? But with affiliate marketing, you can start from as little as a hundred dollars. And also number five, it's also very high profit margins. So for example, if you're promoting a product, you don't have to sort of, um, you know, order the goods. Like let's say for example, if you're starting e-commerce, you don't have to order the goods. You don't really have to hire anyone and you're also able to earn a uh, US dollar. So for example, I'm in Australia, I'm able to, let's say I earn $10,000, then it would be like, you know, times 1.35, the conversion rate to Australian dollars. So it'd be like 13,000 or more, okay? So that is really, really awesome, especially if you're living in a country where it's like, uh, lower cost of living. That means you can save a lot of money and yeah, it's just really, really awesome. So number six, you get to be really, really independent and creative. Uh, what I mean by that is that if you are working at a company and things like that, you know, it's very, very, uh, like you have to follow procedures and you have to do, you know, what the boss tells you to do. But with your own affiliate marketing business, you can create any type of content and you can be really creative with it as well. So you can just fully express yourself. Um, number seven, you don't need any special skills or certifications. Um, you don't need any special certificate for affiliate marketing. You can join any affiliate program as long as you have a website or like a, a following. Um, most likely they'll actually accept you. Now, if you don't have a website and don't have any type of, um, you know, sort of uh, presence online, some affiliate programs might not let you join. So that's why creating a website is really important. So number eight, you don't have to deal with any shipping or customer support. So I do think... Um, you do have to, let's say, for example, if you have a website, if people, uh, you know, comment on your website and things like that, you do have to reply. Um, but there is no like consistent sort of customer support that you have to do, right? The company will actually do that. Um, you don't also need to show your face. Um, you know, you don't have to be a celebrity if you don't want to. You can also use the skills that you learn from affiliate marketing and creating a website to any other business that you want to pursue later. So I think this is a really big one because a lot of people, um, sort of want to do different things later on and you can always use the skills that you learn here later on Okay, so I've gone through some of the pros and the benefits of actually starting an affiliate marketing business and an affiliate marketing website Now I want to go through the cons and sort of the negative side of affiliate marketing because I think it's really important to understand and that way you're able to succeed a lot faster and Also have continued success as well because then you actually know what to do sort of after right so number one, with an affiliate marketing business, it's gonna take you time to achieve results, right? So if you're just starting out fresh, then probably you would expect you know, to get results after the six month mark because you do have to actually take time to actually create the content and you do have to rank your website and there's quite a lot of things that you have to do um, in between, right? So a lot of people think that, okay, I can make money really quickly, I can make money tomorrow and you know live this fancy lifestyle and things like that but to be honest you know because i'm not selling you any course like there you, you can't really achieve that so quickly it's like if you're starting like tennis or if you're starting a new sport right you can't really win the competition so quickly there's a lot of different steps that you have to take like let's say for example you have to learn um with tennis you have to learn how to serve you have to learn your forehand your backhand you have to learn strategy you have to keep fit it's basically the same thing when you're starting your own affiliate marketing business, right? So the people who are showing you how you can actually make money in seven days and things like that, when they make videos about that, most of the time it's for people to actually uh, click into that video and watch that video. 
um, those people actually have experience already, right? So it's different when you have a following already and when you actually have experience already um, with business and things like that. But if you're just starting fresh, like let's say for example, you are just learning about online business, you're only 18 and you're getting started, it's gonna take you time to actually build up your skills and actually you know, make money, right? So sometimes you can actually earn money quicker but sometimes you won't be able to actually sustain that, right? So what you want to do is you want to create really great content and that's going to take you work and time. So you have to understand that affiliate marketing is sort of like your own virtual rental property and obviously it does take you time to build that up. So number three, commissions and terms can change overnight. So a few months ago, Amazon actually changed the terms. So the commission rate was like cut in half or severely reduced. So it's really important to understand that when you're joining an affiliate program, the, the company can actually change the terms overnight, right? So that's why you want to be um, very selective with the types of products and types of affiliate programs that you sign up with. And also, uh, once you become successful with it, you should start promoting more products as well to sort of mitigate that risk. Okay, so number four, there's quite a lot of competition because there's a low barrier of entry. So to actually start affiliate marketing, it's free pretty much, right? So that's gonna create a lot of competition, but to be honest, there's no reason why you can't be the best. Okay, there's absolutely no reason why you can't compete. Um, there's a lot of different products out there and there are a lot of different new products which are coming out as well. Okay, so it's definitely not too late and you can definitely be the best. Number five, you don't have control of the product or service. So what I mean by that is, let's say if you're promoting a product, um, maybe this year it might be great, right? But then next year, the product might not be as good anymore. So it has changed, right? So you don't have control of how the company, uh, like the management of the company and the types of different um, improvements the company makes as well. So that is a big con, I guess. So that's why you have to choose the right company to promote. Um, don't just promote any type of company. And you also have to understand that when you are promoting something, you are not really building up um, a customer base for your business. So over time, after you know, after when you made some money with affiliate marketing, then you gotta start thinking about other revenue streams as well. Like when you're just starting out, you shouldn't really focus on too many different revenue streams because that's gonna overwhelm you and that's gonna take away from uh, your focus on creating content and things like that. But over time, once you have more experience, you can create your own product, you can do a lot of other things and um, make money online, okay? So once you have a website and things like that, there's so many opportunities that you can you know, explore. So number six, you do have to maintain your content. So it's not like, okay, I just create a piece of content and I leave it up there and that's it, you know? You have to update your content just like you have to update or maintain a house, okay? So number seven, it's very easy to get distracted. So when I first started with affiliate marketing and online business, you know, I was just very, very unself-disciplined and, you know, get distracted really, really easily um, because you are your own boss. Like you control everything, you control your own schedule. And if your friend asks you to go out, then you can go out and, you know, you, you're not doing your work anymore. So you do have to police yourself and you do have to make sure that you actually do the work and you have to set schedules for yourself and you have to do all those things by yourself, right? Because you don't have a boss looking over your shoulder. There's no pressure for you anymore. So it's very, very important to understand that. So with that said, I still think affiliate marketing is still really, really amazing, especially if you're just starting out with online business and you wanna make a passive income online. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get straight into this video and we're gonna talk about how to find a niche and finding different products that you can promote and also looking for lower competition uh, keywords that you can actually target for your website and things like that. So part two, we're gonna look at finding a niche and finding products to promote. So how we're gonna approach it is that we need to find the general idea of the niche that we want to get into, then we can find the products and then we can find the low competition and profitable keywords to target for our website's content. So it's really important to understand that you don't need to pick the perfect niche because a lot of times your first one might not be the one, right? But what we need is just a starting point and a direction of our niche so that we can find the right products and things like that. Because when we're actually creating an affiliate marketing website, right? We just need to change the content if we ever need to change something, right? Let's say for example, if you wanna start a restaurant as a business and then two weeks down the line, you wanna change it to a hairdresser, it's completely different. I mean, that one, you need to pick the right one from the get-go, but with affiliate marketing website, it's just about the content and you can delete the content, you can start a new website, it doesn't really matter, okay? So basically when we're talking about finding a niche, just think of the person or the specific group of people that you wanna help. 
So I know that you guys want to make an affiliate marketing website and make affiliate commissions and, and make a passive income, but it's not really what you should be thinking that you are creating, right? So all you're creating is just a helpful resource, a helpful website to help other people. So you wanna help other people make a purchasing decision. Uh, you wanna help them save time and also save money. And you also wanna help them solve a problem. So a lot of beginners actually think that, okay, you need to become a better affiliate marketer to, to make more affiliate commissions, right? So what we're actually doing is we're actually creating content. So then we actually use affiliate marketing as a way to monetize and make money from our content. So basically what you need to do is you need to get better at creating helpful content. So the better the content, the more affiliate commissions that you can make. So a lot of people think, okay, to make more commissions, you need to be better at marketing, better at selling, better at promoting, better at creating funnels and email opt-ins and learn some kind of secret technique with affiliate marketing. There's no secret technique. So what you need to do is you need to become a better content creator. So you have to make sure you remember that. It's really, really, really important. So when you wanna find a niche, uh, what you need to do is you need to start brainstorming some different ideas. So you can actually use an app called Milanote. So it's free to actually sign up um, and then you can use that to organize your thoughts or you could just use a piece of paper. And what you wanna do is you wanna start off with things that you're interested in and skills that you currently have. And then you wanna look at, you know, what current problems you are having and maybe problems that you've had in the past, you know, write that all down. And then you wanna look at, okay, what videos am I watching? You know, what blogs am I reading? Things that you're researching, write that all down. Cause it's really important to try to figure out which one to actually go with, right? So let's say for example, my personal skills and interests are in YouTube, affiliate marketing. I'm not really that skillful in investing, but I'm very, very interested in it. I have some skills in recording videos and editing videos, and also I'm interested and I have some skills in regarding restaurants because my dad owns a restaurant and things like that. And some problems that I had in the past is I had trouble finding a point of sale machine for my dad earlier this year. And more recently, like another problem that I had was trying to find the right investing platform to use because a lot of people on YouTube are promoting like Webull and Robinhood, but I'm in Australia and I think those apps aren't available in Australia. So I went with eToro. Right, so write down all your problems and things that you are researching as well. So I know that sometimes, you know, you might not find that you are passionate or interested about anything, right? So the thing is like, if you're really, really young, then it's gonna develop over time. So don't worry about it. Just pick something that you are a little bit interested in and then that can develop over time. And then once you actually try it, then you can actually know whether you like it or not, right? It's like trying different uh, food for the first time. Like if you never had like Japanese food, um, then you don't know if it's good or not, right? You have to try different food. And then after a period of time, once you've tried uh, different cuisines, then you actually know, okay, which one you like and which one you don't like. So another idea that I have is that, you know, find something that you have a little bit of interest in and then be passionate about creating the best solution possible. Be passionate about creating the best website, the best helpful resource that you can. Be passionate about helping other people uh, solve a problem better than other people. So choose one and go with it. Don't overthink it. So basically from you know my interests and skills and my current problems, then we've developed some website ideas, right? So I wanna create a website uh, that is based around helping other people start and grow and earn money on YouTube, okay? Second idea is helping uh, people, especially people in Australia, how to start and learn about investing, right? So this is sort of like a quite a big niche. So I did wanna narrow it down to Australia because otherwise, there's too many different countries to cover and I wouldn't have too much knowledge about the different apps for all countries, right? So I just wanted to create a very specific one just for Australian people. So you can create one specific for your country as well, because I know that investing is like a very, very big niche and also a very profitable one because it's talking about money. You do want to sort of narrow your niche down sometimes. And another website idea is, you know, I will create a website based around helping uh, restaurant owners and small cafe owners simplify their business and to become more profitable. Okay, so these ideas, these website ideas are based on sort of my own experience and my own interest and my own skills. But I wanna discuss some, some different ones as well so that maybe can spark um, some different ideas for you guys. So let's say for example, um, you have maybe back pain or something like that. Then maybe you could create a website about back pain and then maybe you can give some tips about how to improve that back pain and then you can recommend different products such as different uh, chairs or different uh, beds, um, different massage equipment or whatever it is, right? Or maybe you're interested in pets or dogs. Then you could create a helpful resource to help dog owners find the right uh, dog food or it could be 
um, you know, any equipment or uh, leashes or anything like that, that helps the dog owner to become more successful with taking care of their dog and things like that. Um, another idea is that maybe you could create like a website that helps people uh, find love or something like that. And then you could help them find the right sort of dating website. Um, there's so many different ideas and I've actually created a, a list to help uh, you guys get started as well. So you can just pick one and then what you need to do after that is you just need to ask yourself, okay, what products and services does this person need to succeed, right? So let's say for example, um, what products and services does a YouTuber need to succeed, right? So number one, they'll probably need uh, courses, whether that be like a filming and editing course, a course about money, how to make money on YouTube, um, maybe different equipment, for example, like different camera, different uh, microphones, audio equipment, editing software, YouTube optimization software, or different equipment such as like desks, chairs, lamps, anything like that. Um, if we're talking about like a website about helping um, Australians start investing, then I could promote things such as, you know, trading apps like platforms like Webull, Robinhood, eToro, um, investing courses or any type of investing software. If we're talking about the restaurant owners, you know, what products do they need? Well, they need maybe point of sale machines, different accounting software, different training and courses, or maybe equipment such as like kitchen uh, equipment and things like that. Okay. So you have to ask yourself what products and services do they need to become successful? Just jot that down. And then next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some ideas from different affiliate marketing websites. So what you can actually do is open up Google and let's say for example, we're creating a website for uh, YouTubers, right? So then what you can start off with is type in like best microphones for YouTubers or you could do like uh, best point of sale restaurants for small restaurants or best trading apps for Australia. Because when you actually search for these phrases, you're going to uh, see a lot of different affiliate marketing websites. And from there, you can draw inspiration. Okay, so just open up Google and what you can type in is, for example, you can type in best microphone for YouTubers or if we were building a website for the point of sale uh, machine website, then we'll type in best point of sale for restaurants or we could do best trading apps in Australia, right? So what we wanna do is just research the different websites and just get some inspiration and look at how they're promoting their products and what they're promoting and how they're structuring the website to give us some inspiration for the website that we're gonna be building later. So for example, we just click into it and we just open a few in new tabs and we can look through each one and see which one sort of we relate to most, okay? Because then that way we can just get a lot of inspiration and see exactly what works and what doesn't. Right, so you can look through the website and you can see what they're promoting and how they're promoting, you know, what type of content are they creating. So you can write that down or you can use Milanote and add it into um, like a note thing like that, okay? So for example, we just copy the URL and we can just paste it in like that, okay? And we can look over here. Sometimes we can look on the resources. So generally, if they have like a resources or recommended section on their website, that is probably what is working for them, right? Those are the most highly um, purchased products on their website. And so you can have a look over here and see what they're promoting. See if there's any product that you align with. So for example, maybe you have used it before, you have seen other people use it before. Um, it's something that you are personally interested in. So then you'll just write that down on your piece of paper or on Milanote. So we're gonna look through and just copy all these websites and put it into here. Let's copy this one, copy, paste that in. And then we can look through again. So the recommendations. So over here, TubeBuddy. So because I researched this already, um, this product aligns with me, right? Because I actually use it for YouTube already. So this might be a product that might interest me. So then I could just make sure I copy down the URL over here, paste it in, and maybe I could write down, okay, TubeBuddy. Okay, so that's one product that I can start off with. Right, so if you wanna look through a little bit further into the product, so you can click into here. And then what we could do is we can go to company and we can look for affiliate program. And generally sometimes the affiliate program is gonna be on the bottom, on the footer section. It might be like the partner program and you can look into it and see if you can join. And also you can see um, what the commission rates are. So for this specific product, 
the commission rate is up to 50% reoccurring, all right? So we can go to look at pricing and see how much their plans are, okay? So as you can see, we can see that the plans are $9 a month, $19 and $49 a month, right? So let's say, for example, you are able to get, let's say, um, maybe 10, okay? 10 people and, okay, 10 people times let's say the average price would be 29, okay, $290, okay? Then we do times 0 0.5, okay? So $145 a month reoccurring. So if you are able to get like 10 people per month, then over time, that's gonna really, really add up. So this is basically like an app that you add onto your YouTube and people need to pay a monthly fee onto it. And also this is sort of like a software as a service product, a digital product, um, so that the commission rates are quite high and you also get a, a reoccurring commission. So I do wanna discuss a little bit about digital and also physical products one time and also reoccurring products. So you guys can get an idea of what type of products that you guys wanna promote. So as I mentioned before, there are two different uh, types of products, right? You've got digital products and you've also got physical products. So digital products are like software, uh, courses, even digital service, example, Fiverr, which is sort of like an online marketplace where you sell, um, like there's a lot of freelancers offering different types of services. These generally offer a higher commission rate from like 30 to 100%. And generally um, these ones, you don't need to make as many sales, right? If you're promoting these products. So on the other hand, we've got physical products, which is like products on Amazon, Walmart, and there's different individual brands as well. Um, generally, these are lower commission rates, one to 10%. So you have to generate a higher amount of sales. So basically you'll need more people visiting your website um, to actually make more sales, right? So personally, you know, I prefer digital products, but I think if you really like, you know, maybe like headphones, or if you really like uh, microphones, if you really like certain physical products and you feel like, okay, you want to purchase the product and try it out and give it like an honest review, then I think that might be the way to go, right? So if you don't really know what to pick, I would personally go with digital mainly because I think that you can make a lot more commissions quicker and you can actually just test out the, the service online, right? A lot of them, a lot of times you can actually get a lot of free trials or you can actually sign up you know, with the physical product, if you really want to do well, then you would need the product, right? And do an honest and real review for it, okay? So unless you really, really like it and you do a lot of research on it, then obviously you don't really need to purchase the product, but I do recommend it if you really want to stand out. And with digital products, you can get the free trial and you get a higher commission rate and you can just do everything on the computer, especially if you want to find images to add on your blog, you can just screenshot it and things like that. I mean, that's just my personal preference. You don't really have to choose either one, okay? But you do have to know that there's two types, okay? And that's gonna really determine how much money you're gonna make per month and things like that as well. You can also do both of them at the same time. So for my website, I'm probably gonna be promoting, the majority of it is probably gonna be digital products. And then I'll have a separate section where I do a few physical products because I'm not going to, you know, have a website talking about microphones only, right? Like I only will review the things that I've used um, personally from my own YouTube channel. Um, and then I'll look through, you know, all the different microphones and different um, things that I bought from a YouTube channel. And then I can promote that as well. So you've also got one time versus reoccurring commissions. So one time you just get paid once. So for example, if you promote a coffee machine for $300, you only get paid $15 one time, right? You don't get paid anymore. So with reoccurring commissions, you get paid every time the customer is charged. So this is normally on sort of software as a service products, digital products, uh, which have sort of like a monthly fee, right? So let's say for example, when we're talking about the NordVPN, so they actually get a renewal of, I think $286 if I remember correctly, and they get paid 30% of that, right? So every time they need to renew, then you get paid as well. So as the amount of people that you sign up, your sort of reoccurring commissions actually grow. So I think that is really, really awesome because that's gonna give you a more stable income, um, especially if you're building an affiliate marketing business where you don't really have much reoccurring income coming in. So yeah, so that's something to think about. Obviously you can promote two types um, and you can promote digital and physical. It doesn't really matter, but I think you guys should be aware of that. Now, if we look at the TubeBuddy over here, okay? So as we said before, 
um, if we actually make you know uh, 10 sales per per month right 10 sales per month that is going to be $290 per month and then 50% commission rate that's around 145 but that's going to build up and stack over time so I actually did some more research and as you can see, this is the TubeBuddy affiliate program on the TubeBuddy uh, channel and he's interviewing uh, Roberto Blake, which is another YouTuber. He also has a blog as well as a YouTube channel and over the last four years, he's generated over $211,000 from affiliate commissions and he's earning around six to seven K, probably even more now, probably eight to nine K per month reoccurring from the TubeBuddy affiliate program. Okay, so that's what I mean by trying to to research more about the products. So sort of um, see which one relates to you the best. And then also try to find other people who are successful with it as well, right? Because it's important that, that you sort of believe, you know, that it is possible. And then from that, you're able to actually take action. And then from action, you're able to succeed. So I also did a little bit more research. So if you actually look at, uh, we did a, I think vid IQ versus chew body. Okay, so these are actually two different products, right? Two different products. And here, if we actually look at this one over here, this website over here. So it's like a very, very simple website. And from his blog, I mean, it's very, very simple blog. He's earned over, I think, yeah, he's making around probably $400, $500 per month from TubeBuddy commissions and things like that as well. So for me, I think that's pretty good, right? So then that might be a product that I'm, I might consider promoting, right? So try to do more, more research. And if you do more research, like if you type in like TubeBuddy review, and I'll also check the website on the top over here. So Food Ranger, he's actually like a YouTube uh, food uh, YouTube channel that I watch quite often. And what I noticed is that he has a review over here about the, the TubeBuddy. So as you can see, like, you know, he's only promoting a few different things, right? He's promoting TubeBuddy and, you know, VPNs for China. Both of these are very, very good affiliate programs where you get paid a high commission rate. So I guarantee, you know, he's making thousands of dollars from this blog post alone, okay? So that's how, you know, YouTubers, how uh, people who create websites support their, their channels and things like that. So then the next step is once you've actually have, you know, different products, different website ideas, then what we need to do is we need to have a look at um, it a little bit more in depth. So we need to figure out, you know, how much uh, visitors are these websites getting? And also, um, you know, find out different keyword ideas uh, that we can actually target and different products. Okay, so before we get into the practical side of keyword research, I do wanna help you guys understand, you know, why we need to do keyword research and why we need to use a tool such as Ahrefs to help us with it, okay? So imagine the ocean as Google, right? And then imagine you as the uh, fisherman on the top over here, your website, okay? And imagine uh, the fish as your visitors to your website, okay? So if you don't do any keyword research, like a lot of people actually, um, you know, built the website and then they realize, okay, I need to get traffic to my website. And then they realize, okay, you need to do SEO and then they create content and you randomly create content. So what's gonna happen is that you're not gonna be able to catch anything, right? You're gonna be catching the wrong type of uh, things, okay? So that is why we need to do keyword research. And we also need to find out where we can actually fish because not every area is good for us, right? For example, if we go over here where all the big boys are fishing, then there is fish there. But then again, there's a lot of uh, fishermen there already and they have the latest tools, latest equipment, the latest uh, resources to catch the fish, right? So you're not gonna be able to compete, you're not gonna be able to catch anything. So what we wanna do is we wanna use the tools such as Ahrefs to scan the entire ocean because there are literally millions of fish, um, but we just need to find the right area, okay? So that's why we need to find the right keywords to target. And basically, I'm gonna help you guys do that right now. So for Ahrefs, you can just go to ahrefs.com and that's gonna take you to this page over here. And what I recommend is just starting the seven day trial for $7. Now there are some other free alternatives such as Uber Suggest and I think SEMrush also has a free trial, but I found Ahrefs to be sort of the most accurate um, and it provides a lot of different information which is gonna help you to find the right keywords. So that's what I highly recommend. And I'm just gonna sign into my accounts over here, okay, and sign in. So when we're actually looking at keyword research, we have to uh, really look at 
the type of website that we want to create, right? Because every single website has a different way to monetize and different way to make money. So for example, if you're creating like a local business website, like a local carpet cleaning business, then you want to target keywords that a customer would actually search for. For example, carpet cleaning services in Melbourne or in your specific location. Now for affiliate marketing website specifically, our main monetization strategy is through affiliate commissions, right? So you get paid a commission if someone clicks a link and purchases. So what we want to do is we want to look for key phrases and keywords that people type in into Google and search for where they're just about to purchase the product, right? So some of the top keywords that uh, I recommend is things such as best or like top um, comparisons, reviews, alternatives, and also helpful guides and also helpful answers as well, right? So for example, it could be like best cameras, right? Or it could be like best cameras for YouTubers. And we could even add like a modifier, for example, best cameras for YouTubers in 2021 or 2022, right? So those keywords, people are looking for sort of like a list of the top cameras that they can purchase. And if they like what they see, they're gonna click the link and purchase, then you're gonna make the commission, right? Or you could even do comparisons, right? Comparisons are also really good because people have narrowed down to two different products, right? They've researched, you know, product A and also researched product B, and now they want to compare, okay, which one is better? Which one should they get for their specific needs and purposes, okay? So for comparisons, it's normally like product versus product like that, so VS like that. So those are the things that we can actually search for in the Keywords Explorer um, in a second. Now you can also do like product plus reviews, like which is really, really common, um, as well as product plus alternatives, uh, which is also really good as well, because sometimes people might want to look for different alternatives because that product or that uh, the product features or the price might not be, you know, something they're looking for, right? Helpful answers is also going to be really good. Uh, mainly because, not because sort of uh, they are high converting, but also because they often help us build backlinks to our website. And that's going to increase um, our ranking for the other keywords that we want to rank for, right? Because when we're actually building a website, uh, we need to do keyword research and we need to do like on-page um, search engine optimization. Then we also need to do off-page optimization, which is basically building uh, backlinks to our website. So. For those of you who are not really sure what that means, it's sort of like uh, a backlink is when people are linking to you. Okay, so for example, this is a blog post, right? So over here, this is a link to the Logo Crisp website, right? So basically, the more backlinks that you get from a website to your website, then Google is sort of gonna rank your website higher. So when you're creating, let's say, review content and comparison content, not as many people are gonna link to your website, right? It's just not uh, as easy to link to, right? Because when you're actually creating sort of helpful guides such as like how to do certain things, then it's more likely a website is gonna link to you as a resource. And that's gonna help you uh, sort of build authority on your website and trust for your website. And that's gonna help you increase your rankings for your review or affiliate keyword terms. Okay, so there are a few ways to actually do our keyword research, and I'm just gonna focus on two, uh, two ways to actually get you guys started. So you can click on Site Explorer, and this is gonna be the first way where we just use our competitor's URL, right? Just copy our competitor's URL, which we have done research before, and we can just paste it into here, okay? And this tool is basically gonna scan the entire website and look at all the pages and the different keywords that uh, the website is actually ranking for. Okay, so if we actually go over here, scroll down to organic search, click on organic keywords, and here we can see all the keywords the website is ranking for and which page uh, is ranking for that keyword and the amount of traffic, so how many visitors the, the website is getting. Okay, so for example, this is gonna be for the United States only. Um, we're just gonna focus on that, okay? Right? And then over here, it's gonna be keyword, the keyword difficulty. So how difficult is it to rank uh, your website for the term, right? So this is gonna give you a good sort of indicator of how difficult it is. So you can look through the difficulty and you can also sort the difficulty as well. So what you're gonna notice is um, basically you're gonna have like two URLs which are the same, right? But they're gonna have different keywords which are also ranking as well. So what we do wanna do is sort of uh, group them together, right? So what we can do is actually just go to top pages over here and what it's gonna do is basically gonna group the page URLs together and also show the rankings for 
that specific page, right? Because sometimes uh, when you create content, let's say for example, you're creating content for Q&A questions for YouTube vlogging, uh, other keywords might uh, start ranking as well because um, sometimes people type in different things, but they actually mean the same thing. So for example, someone types in, you know, Q&A questions and someone types in Q and A questions, right? But they both mean the same thing. So that's why this uh, URL is ranking for these keywords. Okay, so what you can do is you can look through the different pages. Okay, uh, we can also set the difficulty. So when we first start out creating a website, I generally recommend, you know, people targeting um, pages which are lower in difficulty because the most important thing when you're starting is to actually get your first sale to get some results first. And once you actually do get results, then you guys can make your first sale, you have confidence, you guys can take more action, and then you guys get more and more results, right? Just like if you were to play tennis, you want to start out, first of all, playing, you know, with, with your partner and then play, you know, with your team and then play locally and then play state level and then national level, then international, right? You don't want to jump straight into a national, international level because you're just going to get dominated and you're going to not have fun, right? So it's really important to look for something which is sort of achievable for what you currently have at the moment. So for example, um, you know, this is not too bad, like Q&A questions. So sometimes, sometimes you're going to find keywords which are not sort of the keywords which I discussed earlier on, which is like review keywords, the comparison keywords and things like that. But still, these keywords might be beneficial to your website as well, because if someone is looking for uh, Q&A questions um, to ask for YouTube videos, then that type of person is probably going to be interested in uh, camera equipment as well. So you can still create content around that area and direct them to your different camera reviews or different tools that a YouTuber needs, right? So this keyword might be a great opportunity for us to actually explore as well. So what we can do is just copy it. I mean, we can actually export it as well, but let's just say, for example, we don't want to export it. We can just uh, copy that keyword and we can just create like a simple um, keyword list or different uh, keyword groups where we can actually create content around. So for example, Q&A questions, what I'll do is probably click over here and copy these keywords over here, copy them onto here as well, okay? And then when I'm actually creating the content for for this website, then I can include some of these keywords in, in the content because what Google does is Google is going to scan your entire website and how they determine your ranking is that they, they sort of scan your content, right? They scan the words uh, within your content and then they rank you accordingly. Okay. So that is just one of the factors. Obviously there's quite a lot of different factors, but I don't really want to, you know, uh, go too in depth. Otherwise it's going to be confusing for you guys. Um, but generally we can copy the keywords and we can include the keywords within our content. Okay. So copy that and copy all the keywords into Milanote. So for example, we've got that and then maybe we could have um, this one over here. So best cheap vlogging camera, we could copy that and then we can look over here and then we can look at these keywords and copy these keywords. And this could be like a separate page that we can create as well. Okay. So yeah, so you want to look through everything and they've got the search volume over here. So in terms of the search volume, um, I think sometimes it really depends on the product that you're promoting, right? So let's say for example, um, if you get like a search volume of like a hundred, I mean, if you're promoting something and the product cost, you know, a hundred dollars and you only get 2% commission, right? That means you only get $2 per sale. So if it's getting, um, you know, 100 visits per month for that keyword, then you make maybe like one sale per month, $2 is not really worth your time too much, right? But if you are promoting something that is a little bit more, um, let's say expensive, and there's only a hundred in search volume per month, then it still might be worth it. Like for example, if you're promoting like a course and it's only getting a hundred searches per month, but if you make one sale, I mean, you make, um, you know, $500 in commissions, that, that should be enough. Right, so it really depends, and you have to use your your own judgment here, depending on uh, like the products and things like that as well. So here you can look through all the different types of keywords that this website is ranking for, um, and you know 
make sure you put in all your keywords that you want to create content for and write down any notes like that. So I don't want to go through too in depth here. Um, what is important is that you guys get started. Okay. So another way to actually um, look at it is go to Keyword Explorer. And remember when we looked at the sort of different uh, products that we could promote. So you should have some ideas of what products that you can promote, right? So let's say for example, uh, I'm going to promote TubeBuddy. Okay. So TubeBuddy and then I'm going to do TubeBuddy review. Okay. And click on search. And this is going to give you the uh, keyword difficulty and the overview of the keyword. Uh, this is the volume for United States, so 300. This is the global volume. Okay. And we can scroll down over here. Okay. And these are some of the keyword ideas. So you would copy the keywords right into your own um, note section over here. So for example, let's say TubeBuddy review, and then we can go over here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna try and include some of these keywords. Uh, for example, TubeBuddy Pro maybe, okay. So these are some other things that people are searching for as well. So it might be like stuff that you wanna include within your content as well, okay. So we can go over here, okay, so TubeBuddy Chrome, copy that, paste that into here. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look at the websites that are ranking in the top 10. So generally, um, you want to look at the domain rating. So besides the keyword difficulty score over here, we also want to look at the domain rating, right? So the domain rating is the strength of the website's backlink profile compared to others um, on a point of 100 out of 100, okay? So if you look at the top 10 results, we're going to notice is that a domain rating of 30, I mean, that's pretty decent. So this website is actually ranking number one, okay? And you've also noticed that this one over here, it's uh, a website ranking and the domain rating is 25. So that is quite low. And that means that we still have a chance to rank in the top 10, which is important. Okay. So we can also click on show more so we can scroll down further, uh, look at the top 20, you know, is there any other sort of websites which are still, um, have a low domain rating. So that's going to give us a chance to, to rate, uh, to rank on the search engines. Now, if everyone is like, you know, ranking like a domain rating of like 70, for example, if you do like, let's say NordVPN, so NordVPN review and type that in, and we can scroll down and look at the, the results over here. What you're going to notice is the domain rating is going to be, um, very, very high. So as you can see, the average is probably, I'd say, you know, 80, you know, 80 or 85, um, domain rating. And you also want to look at the backlinks to the website. So as you can see, a lot of them have like thousands of backlinks or hundreds of backlinks and the difficulty is quite hard over here as well. So that is probably not a good one to actually start off with. So let's just do two buddy, oops, review. And we can scroll down. Okay. So then what you want to do is you also want to look at, uh, the backlink profile, how many backlinks are pointing to the website. The, if you actually notice that, okay, some of these websites don't really have many backlinks, then that's also an opportunity as well. Okay. Which is good. So as you can see, like not too many backlinks, uh, which is good. So this one over here, uh, the food ranges website. So it has a lot of backlinks. So what I notice is that, um, they have a lot of backlinks from, I think, uh, YouTube videos, their own YouTube videos. So then what we could do is we can actually click into it. Okay. And then you want to also look at the content, okay? the content on, on the website. Like, can you realistically beat the content? Because, um, if you want to rank on Google, the, the real way to rank on Google is to have better content than other people. Because the, the point of Google is to actually provide sort of the best search results and the best, uh, information for people who are actually using the search engines. So what they, want to provide is the best information for the user. So what you want to do is you want to create better content than your competitors, right? So I've actually read, you know, this stuff, I mean, it's decent, but it still can be beaten. Um, especially maybe not this one, but like a lot of the other ones, which are ranking over here, I've researched them and you know, they're not that in depth and they don't go into that many details. So I still think that there's still a massive opportunity here especially if you look at this one, like some of the, you know, some of the content there is not that, um, in depth and not that great. If you actually really, really read it, right? Yes. You know, it is quite long, but if you actually read it, like the content is not, you know, the, the best, like if you actually look at, 
um, if we do like NordVPN review, if you look at the content of NordVPN review, like the content is very, very in depth and very, very thorough, right? It goes into very, very uh, detail and it shows a lot of different images, a lot of screenshots and stuff like that. Um, so if you compare that to TubeBuddy, I mean, there, there's still a lot of opportunity there to take advantage of that. Okay, so summing up, the things that we have to consider is the number one is searcher's intent. So people who are just about to purchase or in the process of purchasing, because we're an affiliate marketing website, those are the keywords that we sort of wanna focus in on, right? Then number two is the keyword difficulty. So you can explore the keyword difficulty score, um, try and keep it low, okay? So don't try and target something that's medium or hard yet. Um, you can, but obviously expect that it's gonna take you longer, a lot more resources and a lot more time. So I think that's what you can actually focus on once you actually build some momentum uh, with your website and things like that. Then number two, you can look at the sort of low uh, domain rating. So you wanna make sure that you check, you know, all the websites who are ranking in top 10. So if you actually see websites with the lower sort of domain rating within the top 10, top 20, which is around like 30 or maybe below that, then that's gonna uh, mean that there's a good chance that you can, you know, create a new website and rank there with a lot better content and maybe um, a lot more backlinks to your website. Right, then you also wanna look at the backlinks, the number of backlinks to the website as well and see if there's any opportunity there, right? So if you see that, okay, all these websites over here have you know, a ton of backlinks, like over a hundred, you know, thousands of backlink, then it's gonna be quite hard for you to, to get into that keyword, right? Because the competitors are quite strong. So you also wanna look at um, the content. So you click into the, the actual top 10 results and look at the content and actually read the content. Don't be scared you know, of the content and how long it looks. Sometimes a lot of the content is very, very generic, right? It's not based on like real world experience and it doesn't provide any you know, original, unique insight because there's a lot of content is actually like that, okay? So if you actually explore it, look at it properly um, and see if you guys can actually create better content. If you if you really believe that you can, then I still think that's a good chance that uh, you can actually target that keyword and create content around that. So for example, we were talking about the helpful guides and answers, right? So you can also target the keywords such as not just reviews and comparisons, but you can also do like, let's say for example, you wanna create a, a website around um, helping uh, YouTubers get more, uh, views and how to get them, you know, make more money from YouTube, then you can also target keywords such as like how to rank on YouTube or how to get more views on YouTube. And then within those uh, articles, you can actually recommend them products as well, right? You can recommend them the TubeBuddy or you can recommend them like this specific mic because in the uh, content, you could be like, hey, you need good audio or you need good video. Uh, you got to use this, you got to use, you got to use that right? You can still do it that way as well. So you're not just limited to, you know, this type of content, like review and comparisons and best type of content as well. Okay. So you can also try different things as well. Um, for example, you're going to provide answers for questions that people ask, for example, you know, what microphone is Joe Rogan using or what microphone is, you know, X, Y, and Z celebrity using for their YouTube channel. And then you can create content around that to show them proof that, you know, Joe Rogan is using this microphone and, uh, this is how you set it up, what you need and the cost and things like that as well, right? There's so many um, different keyword ideas. You have to sort of use your own, you know, intuition. And after a while of creating content and things like that, you'll sort of get an idea of um, how to rank on Google and different keywords and things like that. Okay, so I don't want to go through too much um, keyword research because that's going to make this video super, super long. Um, I'll try and cover that maybe in like future videos, but the most important thing is to find maybe like three to five different keywords that you can start working on right away. Um, you can also export the, the data as well. You can add it to your list and things like that. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start creating our website. Okay. So I'm super excited to actually show you guys how to create your website step-by-step. 
we've covered sort of like the theory and the keyword research and everything like that. Now we're gonna do some of the practical steps of setting up your website. So to create a website, we're gonna be doing it in just four simple steps. So the first step is to get your domain name, which is basically your website address. For example, yourname.com, youraffiliatewebsite.com. And hosting is basically like a server where your website is stored. So for example, it stores your content, your images, so that people can access your website all around the world 24 seven, 365 days a year. Then we're gonna be installing WordPress. So WordPress is a free content management system and that basically allows you to create your website without any coding or any technical knowledge, right? So you don't have to learn coding, don't worry about that. We're gonna be using a drag and drop builder to fully customize your website. Then I'll show you guys how to build your website. So if you're wondering why we're using WordPress instead of other website platforms, for example, Wix and also Squarespace, is if you actually search up Wix review, and we can click into some of the top results over here. So if we click into this result over here, what you're gonna notice, it's an affiliate marketing website as well, reviewing the Wix builder and platform and things like that. So they're actually using WordPress and what we could do is right click and view page source. And we notice that they have WP content over here, which means it's uh, WordPress. So for their own affiliate website where they're recommending Wix, um, they're using WordPress as well. So generally WordPress is best for an affiliate marketing website. This is not to say that Wix is you know bad or anything like that, but for this specific purpose and this specific tutorial, that's what I highly recommend. It's what I personally use as well. So same thing with Squarespace. If you look at this website over here, okay? So it might seem like, okay, that's really good and you can use Squarespace. They have a website builder as well. Um, you can also build an affiliate marketing website with Squarespace, but WordPress is just a lot more customizable um, and has a lot more features for building an affiliate website. So you can actually see by viewing page source over here. And if you scroll down, you're gonna notice they use uh, WordPress as well. So you can see WP-content and they're using plugins and things like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our domain hosting and install WordPress and we can do that all at the same place. So you can either click on the link down below or you can open up your browser and type in hosting.com forward slash H-O-G-A-N Hogan, C-H-U-A and click on enter. Now that is my uh, affiliate link. So basically if you do purchase through that, then I'll get a referral commission for that. And that just basically helps support my channel. So you don't get charged any extra. And in some cases you're gonna be able to get a discount as well. So sometimes the discount might change over here um, and the page might change. What we wanna look for here is we wanna look for hosting. So click on hosting up here. Okay, that's gonna click on the drop down, and we wanna get shared website hosting. Okay, so in the past I've also recommended SiteGround as well, which is a really great uh, web host and platform to create your WordPress website as well. So if you do wanna um, use SiteGround, then I'll leave a link down in the description below and also a video to show you guys how to install WordPress there. But SiteGround has recently changed the terms, so it might not be available for all countries now. So I want everyone to be able to follow my tutorials and Hostinger has some really, really great affordable plans um, to get everyone started as well. So as you can see here, 99 cents um, US dollar if you get the four year plan. So it's super, super affordable. And I've also done a review on hosting as well on my channel and they performed really, really well in terms of the speed and also uptime and also customer support. So over here, we've got three different plans that you can choose from. So I do wanna go through each one and which one you should actually pick for your affiliate marketing website. So the first thing is that if you pick either of these three, then it's gonna be completely fine to create any type of website, including your affiliate marketing website, because all three plans you can install WordPress just fine. So the main difference between uh, the single shared and these two plans is gonna be the number of websites it can host. So basically with a single shared hosting, it can only host one website, for example, youraffiliatewebsite.com, and then that's it, okay? With the premium shared and business shared, you can host up to 100 websites on the plan. So you can have like your website, your client's website, your friend's website hosted under sort of one account, and that way you can actually save some money. But this doesn't mean that you can create 100 websites for free. Right, you still have to purchase the domain name, which is like the website address, and normally that's around $10 per year, okay? But it can host up to 100 different websites. Now, if you choose this one, it doesn't mean that you're stuck with it forever. You can always upgrade to the uh, premium shared and also uh, business shared as you grow your business and things like that. So besides the number of websites you can host, generally with the premium shared and business shared accounts, your website will load a little bit faster. 
um, than the single shared hosting plan because hosting actually allocates a little bit more resources to these plans over here. With the um, premium shared, you do get the um, free domain included and some extra resources over here, which you can actually check out. So personally, I actually recommend the business plan mainly because it has everything that you need already, including the daily backups, the free CDN, the free domain and everything like that. So you don't really have to worry anymore. And if you actually compare it to other web hosting plans on the internet, it's gonna be quite affordable if you actually compare it as well. Okay, so over here, what we're gonna do is just gonna click on add to cart. Now, obviously you can get these ones if you want to, that's completely up to you. We're gonna click on add to cart over here. And over here, you can select the plan. So I generally recommend 12 months or more. That way you're able to lock in the discount because as you can see here, um, once the initial discount is over, then the plan renews at a higher rate, right? So if you choose this one, then it's gonna renew at a cheaper rate as well. So that's something to consider. So I'm gonna just select 12 months um, for this tutorial. Now over here, you just need to put in your email address. So for example, if you're logged in already, you can just connect it with Google. Okay, so we're just gonna connect that. Okay, so I'm gonna log into my Google account and then we're gonna scroll back down. So you can pay by credit card or PayPal or even Bitcoin. So I'm just gonna select PayPal and we're gonna scroll down here you can also enter in a coupon code. So generally that is the amount that you're gonna pay. Then you can enter the coupon code Hogan Chua. So H-O-G-A-N-C-H-U-A. And that's gonna save you some money as well. So it's probably gonna save you a little bit more if you get the 48 month plan as well. So once you've actually checked everything, then we can click on submit secure payment and then click on PayPal checkout. I'm gonna log in and just pay that. Okay, so once the payment has gone through, then you should reach uh, this page over here. So we can just click on start now. And over here, uh, if you have selected the plan where you can get the free domain, then we can claim the free domain. If you don't have um, that, then you can click on buy a domain and you can purchase the domain. Now, if you have uh, registered in like GoDaddy or Namecheap, then you need to select this option where you need to connect the domain with the hosting or hosting account, all right? So I'm just gonna select this one over here and we're gonna select our domain name. So this is your website address. So I'm creating a case study website. So I'll probably reveal my you know domain later, but for now I'm just gonna create and use sort of like a demo uh, website. So affiliate tutorial and 91, and then we're gonna select probably a .com domain, okay? And we're gonna click on search so when you're choosing a domain name, um, normally it's good to actually get a .com extension because normally that's a little bit more trustworthy. Um, if you don't know what to pick for your domain name, generally don't pick a domain name which is like product specific or like a year specific, like 2021 reviews or whatever it is. Don't pick that one because then, you know, when it's 2022, then you have to change your domain name and you don't want to do that, right? So try to pick a domain name where it's a little bit more generic and maybe it doesn't you know, include a product name. You can also go with your name as well, which is also a good idea. Once you've actually done that, then you can click on continue. So we're gonna click on build a new website. Okay, and we're gonna install WordPress. So click on select. And over here, we wanna create a WordPress account. So we're gonna put in our password. So this is our login credentials for WordPress. So make sure you remember that, your password. Click on continue. And I'm just gonna save that to my browser. So over here, you've got a bunch of different templates, but we're not gonna be using a template. So I'll be showing you guys how to set it up step-by-step. Step. So click on skip. So over here, you can select your website location. So this is your website server location. So generally this is important if you're building a local website, you wanna choose a server location closest to your audience. So I'm just gonna go with North America for this one and click on select and then finish setup. Okay, so I'm just gonna enter in just some basic information over here. We're gonna click on next step. And yeah, I'm just gonna fill in my contact details and then we are gonna finish the registration. So over here, we can click on manage WordPress and that's gonna take us to our login uh, sort of area for WordPress. And if we click over here, it's gonna take us to the hosting uh, panel area. So this is where you actually control your domains and hosting and whatever you need for your website. Over here is where 
uh, you've logged into WordPress. Okay, so generally, um, if you want to log in again, so I'm just going to log out. So I want to show you guys how to log in. So this is your WordPress login page. Now to arrive at this page again, what we need to do is let's say for example, if we go to our homepage, this is what it currently looks like. So we do need to edit it. Um, but if you want to log in to WordPress, you need to type in forward slash WP dash admin and then enter. So it's always going to be your website name.com forward slash WP admin. And that's going to take you to the WordPress login page. And what I recommend is just bookmarking it. So once you bookmark it, then just enter in your email address and the password you set in before and then click on login. Okay, so this is going to be logged in to your WordPress dashboard area. So we're going to click over here, okay, to the dashboard area over here. And what we want to do is we want to install the SSL certificate. So as you can see, it says not secure. Now you want to have and make sure that your website has a lock icon like that. So that means it's secure. Okay, so I'm just going to click on home over here and then I'm going to try and click on setup. Okay, for the SSL certificate. And we're going to install it on our new domain over here, install SSL. Now, if you have any trouble, you can contact the live chat support and they'll get back to you. Okay, if you have any trouble installing SSL certificate. And then we can just click on close. And if we go over here, let's refresh the page. We're going to take like a few seconds and that might actually log you out when you try to refresh the page because now it is uh, HTTPS enabled. All right, so you're going to log in again and now you have the lock icon um, all set up. So before we actually get started with um, setting up WordPress, you do have to also verify your email address that uh, hosting is gonna send you. You have to verify your um, domain. Um, so you need to click on the link um, in the email they sent you. So just verify that and verify that. Then once that is done, it should be good to go. So if you go back over here and click on domains on the top, something that you might want to do is that you can click on the domain over here right and we can scroll down now this is something that you might want to get so who is privacy this is going to add an extra layer of sort of privacy with your information so for example if you actually sign up with a domain so sometimes people can actually look up your domain information which is going to show your email address and also name now if you want to protect that information you can pay an extra five dollars a year to actually protect that okay so i might personally get that as well it's just basically there to stop people from emailing you because a lot of people will actually email you like different uh marketing offers because they know that you're starting a new business um and things like that okay so we're going to set that up and i think that should be pretty much good to go so let's go back over here okay so that should be good to go your who is privacy is added and also your domain has been verified. So let's go back to our dashboard and show you guys how to set it up. So what I want to do now is I want to show you guys around the WordPress dashboard, uh, sort of clean everything up a little bit because when you're actually building a website with WordPress, sometimes it can get a little bit complicated uh, once you start adding some plugins, once you start doing some things. So what I want to do is show you guys how to use it and how to clear some stuff so that everything is nice and simple so that you guys can focus on what matters most. All right. So here is the dashboard area. So once you actually log in, then this is what you'll see, right? So on the front end, this is what you're going to see on the front end. Now this is the 2021 theme. So this is the default theme. So we'll change it later on. So don't worry about that. And over here, we can actually clear these things. We can dismiss it over here. We can minimize it like that, or we can click on screen options and we can remove everything. Okay. So once you add a few plugins, um, it's going to start sort of uh, getting quite complicated. Uh, so that's why I want to clear everything up because we don't really need it. Okay. Then the next step is we need to go to settings and go to permalinks. So this is really important for search engine optimization. We want to change the permalink settings to post name. Okay. So set it to this one over here so that the title of your post or the title of your page is going to be included in the URL, right? So you don't want it to be like a random number or you don't want it to be something like that. Okay. You want a clear and clean URL structure for your website. So we're going to click on save. The next thing is we can go to post so we can delete this one and just trash it. Let's go to trash and we can delete that permanently and then go to pages and we can also delete the sample page. Just delete that. And I'm also going to just trash that one as well. Okay. Okay, so that is done. 
So next we're going to click on plugins. So with plugins, plugins add extra functionality to your WordPress website, just like if you have apps on your phone, for example, like social media apps or, you know, any productivity apps and things like that, plugins are the same, but for WordPress websites. So what I generally like to do is I like to deactivate everything first uh, because sometimes plugins can cause conflicts with your WordPress website. Um, especially with older plugins and plugins that you haven't updated and things like that. So if you are using plugins and you're not really actually actively using it for your WordPress website, what I do recommend is deactivating and deleting them because sometimes it can cause issues, especially um, security issues and then cause your website to be hacked and things like that. So right now I'm just going to deactivate it, um, all the plugins. Okay. So you can, you guys can actually delete the ones that you know, don't use and things like that. Now, if you have like a caching plugin, for example, Lightspeed Cache or WP Fastest Cache or SG Optimizer and things like that, um, you know, when you're building a website, sometimes you might be ch making changes, right? Now, if the changes don't reflect on your website, then what you probably need to do is try to clear the cache, right? Once you clear the cache, a cache is sort of like temporary storage, right? Once you clear it, then it should actually update. So generally when you have a caching plugin, they'll have a, a sort of thing on the top over here. Okay. So when you click over here, you can purge the cache and delete everything. Okay. So I'm just going to delete it, um, deactivate it for now, because when I'm building my website, I generally like to deactivate it. So if you guys want to start, you know, WordPress from scratch and you want to reset everything, um, especially if you have an existing WordPress website and you know, everything is just not working properly and things like that, then you can actually download a plugin called WP reset. So you can click on add new and search for this plugin. And once you activate it, it will actually um, allow you to reset WordPress back to the you know default settings that you had when in the very, very beginning. So we can open the tools over here and you can see what it deletes. So it actually deletes like your comments, your pages and your post. So if you do uh, want to reset it, then what you want to do is copy your content onto like a word document and things like that. And you can type in reset here and reset the website. Okay. You can also create a snapshot as well. So that is the basics. Now, what we want to do is we want to go and install a theme. Okay. So to install a theme, we can hover over appearance and click on themes. So the current theme that we're using is the 2021 theme. So this is the default sort of WordPress theme, right? So it sort of adds the appearance for your website. So if we click on add new over here, then what you're going to notice is thousands of different themes. So a lot of these themes are free themes and you do have to upgrade later on to sort of enjoy a lot of these different features. So what I've done is actually partnered up with Themeify to share with you guys their most popular theme, the Themeify Ultra theme. So this is a really, really awesome theme because it allows you to control every aspect of your WordPress website. So a lot of people might be using other themes. I think that is fine as well. So it really depends on your personal preference. Um, but personally, this is what I use for my website and I like it because it has everything that you need, right? You can literally take control of the header, the footer section. Um, you can change a lot of the things without learning how to code. So what I've done is I've included the download link in the description below in the YouTube description. So you can download that onto your computer and it's going to look something like this over here. Okay. Themify ultra dot zip. And then you can go back over here, go back over here and upload theme choose file and look for themify ultra dot zip and open and install now. So sometimes it might actually um, come in like a folder because I think if you're using like Safari or something like that, it might automatically unzip into a folder like that and you don't want to upload the folder. So you want to right click and you want to compress it back into the zip file. Okay. Before you upload it. So let's go back over here. And once that is uploaded, then we can actually activate it. So you want to make sure you upload it as themes. So a lot of people actually upload it as a plugin and that's not going to work. All right. Because the sort of theme and the, uh, drag and drop builder is included in the theme itself, right? So everything in a whole package. So if in the future you need to update your theme, you can go to hoganchua.com forward slash update, and you can watch this video to show you guys how to update your theme. Um, in your WordPress dashboard area. Okay. So I'll include the download links over here. Um, and you can download it and you can update your themes as well as the plugins that you might need as well. Okay. So once that is done, we're going to click on activate. Now, if you do have any issues, then you can email me at support at hoganchua.com or you can drop a comment in the YouTube, uh, comments area. So here are the skins and demos. So generally I just, uh, stick with the default one. So I'm going to click on close on the top. Okay. And let's just close that. 
So if we actually refresh our page now, it's gonna change the look of our website. Okay, if you hover over here and turn on the builder, it's gonna show builder is not available on this page. So a lot of people don't actually follow my videos. Um, and a lot of people have this problem where they say the builder is not available. Now this is because we haven't created our pages yet. So this is actually not a page, right? So we have to go and create our pages right now. So if you hover on the top over here, we can click on page, right? Or you can click on post. So let's click on page first. And what we need to do is create our home page, right? So we're gonna add in a page. Now, if we actually click on the three dots over here, it might actually look like this, okay? So I don't like this layout. I like to have it like this, okay? So you can click on the three dots and you can deselect the full screen mode, okay? So title, it's gonna be home and click on publish and publish again. Okay, that's gonna take us to this URL over here. We can click, at, click that to view the page. So this is going to um, display as yourwebsite.com forward slash home. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this home page is just going to be our sort of default uh, URL, okay? So if we click over here, we want it to be just like that, okay? So to do that, we have to go back to the dashboard and settings, I believe, and then go to reading and then set your home page display to a static page and select home. Okay, once you've selected that, then we can click on save and that's done. Okay, so settings, reading, and then go to a static page, set it to home and then save changes. So if we go back over here and if we click on the home page, then it's just gonna be our url.com, okay? So the next thing, what we're gonna do is add in some more pages. So we can go back to our dashboard. You can also add in pages like that, or you can go back to dashboard and navigate to pages over here and you can control everything from here as well. So let's click and add new. So let's just add in a few more pages. So you can add as many pages as you want. So I'm just gonna add an about page and let's publish that. Let's add a new one. So let's add maybe a blog page, okay? and publish, publish that. And then we're gonna add maybe like an affiliate disclaimer page. So click on page again. Okay, and publish and publish that again. So that should be done. So let's go back to our homepage. All right, so we've got our pages listed over here. So what we wanna do is we wanna change the menu, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how to arrange the menu, the top navigation menu, and also how to add in pages on the bottom if you do wanna do that as well. So let's go and arrange our menu, and we can do that by going to customize, and then we can click on back, and then let's click on menus. Let's click on create new menu. So this one's gonna to be top nav for top navigation. And for the menu location, we wanna set it to the main nav, which is the top over here. Okay, if you wanna add a menu for the footer, we need to click on footer navigation. So let's click that there, click on next. Now, what you're gonna notice is that it has three dots over here, and that is actually the mobile menu. So what you can do is actually go and click on the top over here and try to zoom out of your browser a little bit, and that should display. Okay, so we need to add in the items first. So Let's add in item, let's add in our blog page and maybe our about page like that. And then we can just rearrange it by dragging and dropping, okay? So let's click on publish and then that's gonna display. So what if you wanna create like a drop down menu? So a drop down menu is like if you hover over here, it's gonna drop down. So we can do that by just indenting it. So click it and drag it and sort of put it below the about, okay? So that's gonna be like a, let's publish that. And if we actually refresh that, let's just open that in a new tab to show you what that looks like, okay? So when you hover over that, it's gonna drop down like that, okay? So you don't have to do that now, but I just wanted to show you guys how to actually do that. So let's go over there. And then we wanna select automatically add new um, pages to the menu. So when you create a new page, it's gonna automatically add it to the menu. So you can rearrange it and it, you can delete it anytime that you guys want, okay? Let's publish that and let's go back over here and we can create a new menu. So it could be like a footer menu and then we can select footer navigation and click on next. 
and then we can add item and then we can add affiliate disclaimer or whichever page that you want to put on the bottom click on publish and then that's going to add your page like that okay so let's click on close once that is finished okay so the next step is i want to show you guys how to change this and how to uh, delete this home title and also this section over here so if we click on turn on builder then it should turn on the builder and we can start editing our page but this title over here is in our way as well as this sidebar. So I'll show you guys how to customize that. Let's click on close. Okay, so let's go back over to dashboard and then let's go to Themify Ultra, Themify settings. Okay, so this is where you can actually control your layout of your Themify uh, website. Okay, so let's go to the default layouts and let's go to default page layout, all right? So for the default page layout, what we want to do is we want to remove the title and remove the sidebar on here. So let's go there. Let's go and hide it and let's change the sidebar to no sidebar and then save it. And then if we refresh it, then that's going to delete. Okay. So that's also going to change the layouts of um, the header and footer. So what we want to do is let's go to theme settings over here. Let's go to theme appearance. So let's make sure we have this one selected and let's click on save. And then let's refresh that. Okay, so that if that doesn't change, then it might be the cache. So what I wanna do is actually go over here to the, let's go to Themify Builder. Okay, go to tools and I'm gonna regenerate the CSS files. Okay, so hopefully that is going to all right, so that's pretty much good to go. So summarizing how I fixed it is I went back to Themify settings, uh, the Themify builder, and then you can go to tools, okay? And then regenerate the CSS files. Sometimes you might need to delete the cache as well and things like that. And I also deleted the browser caching as well, and then it should be pretty much good to go. So sometimes you might you know, encounter these issues uh, whenever you're building like a WordPress website or um, you know, any type of website, you're gonna encounter issues. So this is one of the most common issues. So I did wanna include it in the video so that you guys can sort of solve it for yourself. So let's go back over here. Um, let's go to theme settings, okay? And what I wanna do is I wanna exclude the tagline, okay? And let's just exclude that over there. And you can play around with the different settings, um, the basic display settings for your footer as well. Uh, you can update that. So let's go and save it. And then let's go over here, let's refresh it. And that's gonna disappear. Okay, so I might just hide the, the search bar as well as this one over here. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's hide the footer logo. And I'm also gonna go down to where is it okay footer text okay and i'm gonna hide footer text too and then click on save and then refresh it and then that is pretty much good to go right so you can also change the footer design the layout as well uh, this is the default one so i might change it to the footer block let's click on save now hopefully this one's going to save okay so that is pretty much good to go so what we can do now is click on customize on the top over here. Now, if you don't see the bar, then what I do recommend is refreshing the page, then you should be able to see it. And then what you wanna do is uh, navigate to theme of our options. It should automatically redirect you here and then click on site logo and tagline, site logo. And then here you can change the site title. So I'm just gonna name it logo. So I just wanna keep everything as simple as possible. Now, if you do wanna add in a logo image, you can select this uh, tab over here. And I've also got a video where I show you guys how to make a free logo and fab icon using Canva. So Canva is a really awesome tool. Um, I show you exactly how to use it and create a logo as well as your fab icon, which is the little icon on the top over here. So let's go over here and you can also just, you know, choose a font and just use that as your logo um, because you don't really need to worry too much about your logo at this time. Uh, what you do want to focus on is your content. So just keep it nice and simple for now. You can also change the site tagline. Um, so we can change it to like, for example, ultimate resource for YouTube creators. So this should be like basically, you know, telling people what your site is about and you know, who it is for, who is it helping and things like that. 
So for me, I'm creating a website that's going to help YouTube creators, you know, make money online and also, you know, get more subscribers and views. So I'm just calling it ultimate resource for YouTube creators for now. So I probably will change it later on, but I think that is pretty good for now. So we're going to minimize it and click on publish. So to add your fab icon, you can click on back and then we can click on site identity, click on that and select site icon, select files. And then we're going to upload the picture. Okay. So this one over here, a PNG. So, so once that is done, click on select and then that should be published and that should be done, right? So it should be 5112 by 5112. And you can follow this video to, and I'll show you guys how to make the fab icon and things like that. Okay. So once that is done, then we can close it. And then you should have your fab icon on the top and you can see the title as well as the site tagline has changed. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to use the builder. So you can turn on the builder. Now, if you don't see this builder icon, like it might say it's not available on this page. Now that's because you haven't followed the video. Uh, make sure you skip back a little bit and I'll leave the timestamp in the description uh, where I show you guys how to add in pages and set your home page and things like that. So over here is your panel area where you have all the different uh, modules which you can add and drop in. So we can also click it and we can um, move it like that or we can drag it on the left as well. So I prefer on the left. So what we want to do is we want to create like a hero image, uh, hero image section um, for your website. So what we can do is hover over here. Okay, so this is the row. Okay, so let's add the styling and add in a background. So then we're going to add an image, right? So for your background image, we're going to click on plus, upload files, select files. And then here I'm going to upload a hero image. So we're going to try and upload maybe this one. Okay. And click on open. And this is the size of our image. So it's around 1900 by 1200 pixels approximately, and it's less than 500 kilobytes. So you generally want to keep it, you know, around 500 kilobytes or less. Um, otherwise your website is going to load slowly because that's going to, uh, the image size is really big. All right. So generally keep it around 500 and insert file image like that. And then here for your background image, we can set it to full cover. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that goes all the way across. So hover over the row again, and then hover over the gear icon. And uh, let's do that again. And for the row width, select full width. Right, that's gonna um, adjust it so the row is gonna go all the way across, right? So the next thing that we can do is we can click on done, right? Now, if you wanna hover over here, uh, you can actually see some purple. And what we can do is actually add uh, spacing or padding to that, okay? So we're gonna drag it and let's just try and do maybe 150 for now, okay? So we can adjust it later on, okay? Hover over here and you can see that purple highlight again. So drag it and drop it down to around 150. So try and keep it even like that. Okay. That should be good. All right now let's add in a text module. So over here, drag in a text. So I'm just going to call it maybe ultimate creators resource. So we sort of want to just tell, you know, people what this website is about. Let's change it to heading one. Okay, so when you're actually using heading ones and heading twos and things like that, try to keep it only uh, one heading one per page, right? So this is for search engine purposes. You don't want to have multiple heading ones for your page because Google is going to use that as a uh, sort of on page SEO uh, ranking factor. Okay, so only use one heading one and the rest can be like heading two or three or four or anything that you guys want. Okay, so once you have that, then we can also align the text into the middle. So to do that, we can click on styling tab over here. And then for the font, we can just click on text align to the middle. And then we can also change the color like that. All right. And then we could also go to the tab over here, general, and then click on heading, heading one. And then we can set the font size here specifically for heading one. Okay. So I'll show you guys how to set it universally later on. Um, we can change it to any size. So I'm going to change it to five EM. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too big. So let's just change it to maybe four. Yeah, four is okay for now. Okay, and then click on done. So the next thing that I want to do is make sure that text sort of pops a little bit. And for that, we can actually click on it again. Let's click over here. 
let's go to font and let's try and add some text shadow. Okay, so I'm gonna add one, one, and maybe blur, set it to five. And then text shadow, let's set that to black. I might drop the opacity down to 0 0.5, okay? So that's gonna make sure that text pops out a little bit by adding a text shadow. You can also hover over here, styling, and then go to row overlay, and then we can change this to black, right? And then drop the opacity down to like 10%. Okay, so it's gonna make the image a little bit darker, and that just uh, sort of enhances the text in the middle a little bit, right? So once you're done, click on done, and then that is done. So I forgot to actually mention uh, where to get your images from. Now, if you don't have images of your own, you can go to a website called unsplash.com and you can find really nice images here for your website. So you can search for like creator or creating or something like that. Um, they've got a ton of really nice images like this one over here, uh, this one over here. You wanna try and look for an image which is like uh, horizontal rather than uh, vertical. Right, because we need the we need it for our hero image, and we want to make sure that when we put text over it, then the text still looks good. Okay, so you want to make sure you pick the right image. That's really really important, because otherwise it won't be visible. Okay, so you can find images over here. You can also use Adobe Stock um, dot com, I think, and you can search for images over here. Now this is paid, um, but I think the quality of images is really good and probably a lot more unique as well. Okay. So you can use that and when you actually download the image, you can click into the image and we can download it for free. Generally, you wanna click on the drop down, and you can download it as a medium size. Okay, otherwise, if you download it as the original, it's gonna to be too, too large and the file size is gonna to be too big. Okay, let's go over here and what we could do is we can also drag in another text module. Okay, so this is like a subheadline. Um, I'm not sure what I wanna put in here yet, so I might just do like subheadline subheading okay and let's just click on save and what we could do is hover over here again click on styling and we can go to font and we can align everything into the middle like that and we can also change the color so basically when we do that it's going to uh, adjust everything within the row okay so if we change the font size over here to maybe I think 20 I think that should be okay. Let's click on save. And we can click on this um, text module over here, styling, we can click on margin, and we're gonna minus the margin. So minus 10, okay, that's gonna move it up. So what margin does is, it's basically, I'm gonna adjust the spacing outside the uh, blue box, right? Let's say, do, let's say we do minus 20, it's gonna do that, right? So the padding is, if we click on that, it's going to adjust the spacing within that blue box, right? So if we do, let's say we do 100, okay? So that's gonna adjust the spacing within that blue box, right? Like that, that's the padding. So let's just delete that. The margin over here, okay, let's do 100. So it's gonna adjust the spacing um, outside that blue box. So we just want it a little bit, so like a little bit closer, like that, and save. And then the next thing that I wanna do is add in a button, okay? So drag it below there. And then we can change the button text. So we could do like start here. So I don't have anything to link at the moment. So generally what I do is I link it to maybe like a start now page or maybe my blog page, I might do that. So we can right click over here, copy link address, okay? Okay, so just paste in your URL into there just like that. And you can link them to any page later on. I just want to show you guys how to use it. You can also change the shape of the button to this one. Okay, so that one might look good. Or maybe this one, let's just change it a little bit. Um, the button is quite large. We can also change the color. Black one, we can change it to red. You know, it really depends on your color scheme. So I'll show you guys how I choose the color scheme in a second. So let's just click on transparent for now. And let's go to styling, button link, background. Okay, so this is where you can actually change the color like that and you can uh, change it to any color that you want, right? So for me, when I pick my color scheme, I generally just uh, do it on Milanote, right? So I choose the colors beforehand, um, before I sort of build my website. I sort of take inspiration from other websites and what you can do is you can download a Chrome extension. It's called, I think, Full Screen Capture and you can capture um, like entire pages 
and you can get a lot of inspiration when you're building your website later, okay? And if you don't know which color to choose, you can go to Adobe, um, Adobe Color, just Google it, and then we can go over here, and then we can go to Extract Theme. So you can find an image on Unsplash, right? So search for an image that you like, and for example, let's go Landscape, and let's say you like this image over here, we can download it onto our computer, or you like maybe this one over here or this one, we can go back over here to Adobe and we can drop that image in over here and that's gonna create a nice sort of color scheme, right? You can also change the different moods as well, like that, which I think is really, really nice. And then what you could do is just copy the color code and you can put it into Milanote. And then that way, when you actually build your website, you can use the same colors uh, throughout your entire website. And that just ensures everything is professional. So that's how professionals actually design and you know, edit the colors uh, for the website. That's why it looks so good. Um, so yeah, so that's what I highly recommend. And then also choosing some neutral colors as well, which you can use for your website. So generally use these colors when you don't know which color to actually use. So let's go back over here. So let's just say, for example, I like, I've picked this color scheme over here. Okay, so this orange, I really like this orange. And this is gonna be like my accent color. So I picked like a green sort of color scheme and then I'm gonna use this orange um, sparingly on my website. So maybe I can use it on my button. So let's click over here, styling, and just paste that in like that. And then we can click on hover and then I go to over here, let's just paste this one in as well, copy, come back and paste that in, and that's looking great, right? So I might change the size of that button a little bit, so let's just, it's too big I think, um, 16, I think that looks okay. Okay, so I might edit it later, but let's just keep it nice and simple for now, save it, and close it. All right, so that is a very, very simple uh, layout. So what you're gonna notice is a gap over here and it's not gonna stretch across. So what we need to do is go to edit page and then what we're gonna do is make sure that stretches all the way across uh, to the left and that space on the top is actually gone. So let's scroll down to the Themeify custom panel. Okay, click on the drop down, and that's gonna appear. And then for the content width, you wanna select full width. So it goes all the way across, okay and update. So let's click on view page. You can click on view page over here or click on permalink and that's gonna take you to that page as well. All right, so that is looking great. So before we get started to add content onto our website and also display that content, I do wanna show you guys some essential things, which is for example, your affiliate disclaimer, which I recommend adding in. So you can just simply turn on the builder and add in your text module and drop in your affiliate disclosure. So for example, it could be like some of these links on this website are affiliate links. This means if you purchase through those links, we may receive a commission. So this doesn't incur any cost to you. In some cases, you may receive a discount. So these commissions help support the content for our website. So you could have something like that uh, for your affiliate disclosure. So this is like an FTC requirement uh, and you can also add it onto your blog post as well, which I recommend and I'll show you guys how to do that later. So you can simply just add that in and then you should be good to go. Then you can create like a simple about page, right? So about page is gonna build some trust with your audience. So you can tell them, you know, what this website is about, who does it intend to help, why do you create it, and where to actually find you, okay? So then next, you might wanna display some social media icons down here. So we're gonna go back to our dashboard section and I'll show you how to quickly add that in. So Themify Ultra, Themify Settings, and then we can go to Social Links. And here is where you can just paste your profile URLs, right? So for example, Twitter. So I'm just gonna paste that in to show you quickly how that works. You can also change the color, but I just like to keep it as default. Uh, Facebook, I'm gonna copy that and let's paste that in here. And then YouTube as well. So you can copy your, your YouTube uh, channel over here. And let's say if you have Instagram, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna paste that in. Let's just change this to Instagram like that. And then insert icon. And then I'm gonna click on Font Awesome, and then I'm gonna try and type in Instagram. Okay, so this one over here, and then that should be added in. Okay, so you can also add in additional ones as well. Then we can click on Save. And now, before we actually um, exit out of here, we need to actually display it. So we need to go to Appearance and Widgets. So let's go to Appearance and Widgets. 
And then what we need to do is look for themify social links over here. So we can drop this widget onto any widget over here. So we're going to drop it on the footer social widget section. Okay. And then we're going to open link in a new window. Okay. So generally I like to open links in a new window if it's an external link, uh, a link that is not on your website. Okay. Cause you want people to stick on your website. You don't want them to, you know, leave. So we're going to click on save and you can add it to your sidebar section later as well for your blog. Um, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay. So let's go back to our homepage and then you should have your social links like that. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. So another thing I want to show you is if you click on about, if we turn on the builder, okay. So if we go to the widgets over here, we can drop it below. So we can select themify social widgets as well like that. And that should display as well. Okay. So I'm going to open link in a new tab. And for the color, I'm going to click on styling and then we're going to see, I think that should be a link. So we're going to change the link color to maybe like a dark gray, something like, yeah, I think that should be fine. Maybe the same color. So yeah, same color as a text sort of thing. Okay. That looks pretty good. Let's click on done. Okay. So you can do that as well. You can also go to blocks. So these are sort of pre-created blocks, which you can drag and drop in. Um, to help you with the layout design of your website as well. So I do have a full tutorial on showing you guys step by step of how to actually create the website and how to use the builder and all the different functions on it. Because for this video, I just wanted to focus mostly on actually getting you guys results. Let's go to the, uh, let's go layouts over here, load layout. And you can also load different layouts as well, which have been designed. So for example, if you want to load this about uh, layout, then you can do that as well. Okay. And then all you need to do is click into the modules and edit the text and change images as well as the colors. Then you should be good to go. So let's click on close. Let's save that. Let's close this over here. Next thing that is really important and really crucial to understand is that we want to make sure that our website is always mobile responsive. So if we resize the screen just by dragging it in, you're going to see that image is not looking that great, right? And the text is not looking that great. Um, it should be a lot more responsive than that. Okay. So to make it more responsive, we can turn on the builder and what we can do is we can set the styling for the mobile devices only or tablet devices or tablet landscape. So right now we're on the desktop version, so we can click on mobile. All right. And what we can do is we can either display that image on the top or on the bottom. So to do that, we can hover over the row and we can set it to this one over here. Okay. So to change it like that, or we could try and put it below that. So we can do something like this. Okay. Right to left. And that's going to display like that. So I think that is perfect right now. Um, obviously your image is not going to be that big on mobile because, uh, right now it's displaying quite large, but that is fine. Then what we could do is make sure that on tablet, it's uh, looking great as well. So we could do the same thing or we could, um, also change it to, something different as well. So for example, what we could do is let's say, for example, we for tablet landscape. Okay. Maybe we don't want to have this image display at all. So we can hover over here and click on visibility and then we can hide it for specific devices as well. Okay. So you can also do something like, for example, we can also duplicate it like this. And then what we could do is click visibility for this one and we can hide it for mobile. And what we could do for this one is we can click on visibility, display it for mobile only, and then go to image. And we can ultimately sort of change that image if we want to. So for example, we could do like, let's go ahead and upload another image. So maybe this one over here, open. So let's go and insert file URL. Okay. So what it's going to do is click on done. Let's click on mobile. And then, okay, so that should click on that one. Let's go to visibility. So on mobile, it should hide. Okay, let's click on done, save it and close it. Okay, so now if we uh, resize the screen like that, then that's going to edit and change the image for mobile devices only. Okay, so that's really um, important to know um, because sometimes you might need to use that. So what you want to do is whenever you build a new layout for a page or anything like that, you always want to make sure that you have a mobile responsive website. So you always want to check it 
like that. And if it doesn't look uh, good, then you can always edit it, okay? So we can also click on Turn On Builder and we can also set a specific size for the text or the buttons for mobile devices only. So for example, okay, we'll click on the mobile device over here, click on text, and then we can click on styling. We can go to the heading one fonts, heading one, and we can change it. So we can change it to like, let's say three. Okay, so make it a little bit smaller. So this is gonna only change for mobile devices only. If we click back onto the desktop version, then what you're gonna notice is that it goes back to that specific size. So you can go back over here and that changes, right? So you can even change the color and you can edit it however you like, specific for mobile devices only, okay? Click on done, save, and let's close that. Okay, so we've got the basics for our website done. So right now, what we need to do is we need to focus in on creating content for our website. Okay, so this is gonna be the most important part for your affiliate marketing business and your affiliate marketing website. So think of content sort of like food for a restaurant. So with a restaurant, right, everything could be bad, but if the food is amazing, then it still could be super busy. So that's how important content is for your website. So right now we do wanna just have a very, very simple layout. Now, a lot of people, you know, focus in on, you know, try to create the perfect website before they actually create content. So the most important thing is to have content so that people come to our website first, we make some sales, then we can always adjust it as we go. Because we don't have much stuff on our website, then we can't really create much of a layout anyway. So what we wanna do is for our content creation, you wanna make sure that you've done your keyword research from before, okay? So what we've done is I've determined that I wanna target TubeBuddy review uh, for my page. So if we actually go to TubeBuddy review over here, what you're gonna notice is if you actually do like a quotation search, basically we're competing against 7,000 other websites, right? So we wanna make sure that our website is ranking on page number one, because generally if it's not ranking on page number one, then people aren't really going to, you know, click on page number two and three and four and things like that. Now, ideally we do wanna have our website ranking number one, two or three, right? So there are thousands of different ranking factors for your website. But the main two factors is gonna be like the relevance and the quality of content and also the number of backlinks for your website. So what I mean by backlinks is, let's say for example, on this Forbes uh, article, and if you read the article, you'll notice that they have different links to other pages as well. So if we click on a link, okay, and that's gonna redirect to entrepreneur.com and this article over here. So this is a backlink from Forbes to Entrepreneur. So generally the more links that you have to your website, the higher you're gonna rank on Google, right? Provided that your content is good, right? So each link to your website is sort of like a vote of popularity. So the more votes, then the higher that you're gonna rank. So not all votes are sort of um, equal. So if you're getting a link from Forbes.com, which is a you know highly trusted website that gets millions of visitors each month, then it's gonna be different uh, if you get a link from a, a newer website. So to actually get links to your website, we need to have the best content possible because if we don't have the best content, then there's no reason why people are going to actually link to us in the first place, right? So what we need to focus in on now is creating great content. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly step-by-step step how to actually do that. So there are a few key elements of great content. So number one, which is probably gonna be the most important one, is that your content should match the searcher's intent. Okay, so what I mean by that is, what is the user, what is the searcher trying to find, like the information, right? You wanna provide the information that they're looking for. So for example, if we are creating content about TubeBuddy review for that keyword, then your content should be a review about TubeBuddy, right? It should talk about exactly what it is, you know, who uses the product, is it good or not, the different plans and pricing, do you actually recommend it? So I know that it sounds like very, very straightforward and sounds kind of stupid that you you wouldn't do that in, in the first place. But when I first created uh, my website, like eight years ago, I was creating a website for maxi dresses, right? So what I found was that, okay, maxi dresses was very, very low competition and it had like over 100,000 um, searches per month, right? So what I thought I would do is that maybe I could actually target this keyword because it's low competition and no one else is actually doing it. So the thing is I created a website and I wanted to link them to Amazon, right? So that I could make an Amazon affiliate commission, right? But the thing is, if you actually type in max addresses, what you're gonna notice is that all of these websites over here are sort of product uh, pages or product categories. So 
people are actually looking for, you know, a real e-commerce website and they want to browse all the dresses and they want to, you know, purchase the dresses. Okay. So they don't really want to read a um, sort of blog post about maxi dresses and then click an affiliate link to direct them to another website to purchase the product, right? They want a real e-commerce website that they trust and then they can browse the product and purchase the product, right? So that's the search's intent. Okay, so you always want to make sure that you create content that matches the searcher's intent. So, for example, if for example you might um, you might want to create a review uh, about ShoeBuddy, okay, but then you might think, okay, this doesn't actually get too many searches, and you know it's easy, but yeah, it's not going to get too many searches. So, what you want to try and do is maybe you wanted to try and just target ShoeBuddy, <laughs> okay? So this one might be medium difficulty, but as you can see, the global volume is quite high, so a lot of people are searching for it. But if you actually go and type in ShoeBuddy over here, then if you actually scroll and look at the top 10 results, there's no sort of, um, you know, blog content about ShoeBuddy, right? It's all like, for example, uh, the actual website, the actual Chrome extension, um, ShoeBuddy's YouTube channel, the App Store, and things like that. So people aren't really looking for a article about ShoeBuddy, right? If you know what I mean. So if you actually target this keyword, then you're probably not going to rank for it on page number one. Okay, because people are looking for the exact product. So before you actually create content for a specific keyword or key phrase, always do a Google search for that keyword and look at the top 10 results and see you know, what type of content they've actually created. Okay, so many times you don't have to try and reinvent the wheel. Uh, you do wanna provide you know, better content, but you don't wanna have it like too far off what is currently ranking, okay? Because that's generally what people are actually looking for in the first place, right? So don't try to change it up too much. You just want to create something that's a lot better, a lot more unique, and then you want to get backlinks to your website and that's just the basics of it, okay? So the next thing is also equally important is that you want to create unique content. So you never want to copy other people's content, especially if you're copying like the whole entire article, you don't want to copy and paste, right? That's not going to work. You're going to make sure that content is unique and not a duplicate because the thing is like, there's no reason why Google is going to rank your website if it's the same content as another website, right? That will just be spammy, okay? So that's very, very important that you don't want to copy um, huge chunks of other people's websites. Now, yes, you can copy like maybe like a small quote and things like that, um, but you definitely don't want to copy like the entire article, okay? So number three, uh, you want to provide real insight and real experience. So a lot of people, when they're creating a affiliate marketing website, they are just, you know, copying the, the features and talking about the features, but they're not sharing their real experience and real insight. Okay. So I think, you know, 2021 and moving forward, a lot of uh, websites that actually just copy the features and just talk about that without actually trying the product is going to fail, right? Because most people, when they're starting an affiliate marketing business, they want to do the least amount of possible. So if you actually have real insight and real experience, it's going to help protect your content from from other competitors as well okay and number four you want to have good understanding of the topic or the product so you want to make sure you do your research um you know really thoroughly now if you don't have the product you want to make sure you do as much research as possible if you don't understand the topic then you want to find out and fully understand it before you write about it so if you look at all the top websites all the top youtubers you know they have a good understanding of what they're talking about okay so that's really really important if you don't understand you have to learn that's just the truth, you know, there's no way around it. So if you do understand the topic, then that's awesome, okay? You're gonna have a head start. But if you don't, then you have to learn more about it. Number five, you wanna try and include keywords from your keyword research naturally within your content. So for example, if we are doing the TubeBuddy review, okay? So what you can do is you can look at the top result or the top three results, and you can click into the keywords, right? Um, that they're actually ranking for, for that page. And what you're gonna notice is that um, it's also ranking for other keywords as well. So like, what is TubeBuddy? Um, is TubeBuddy safe? How to use TubeBuddy? So these are some of the things that people are, are searching for and some of the questions that people wanna uh, want answered. Okay, so if you actually include that content within your review content, then it's gonna be amazing, right? Because that's exactly what people are looking for. So that's why it's really important to look at the keyword research and look at all the keywords and try to create um, maybe different subheadings from it as well. So for example, you could have TubeBuddy pricing and then you could have like content about is TubeBuddy free, how to use it and things like that within your content. And that's really gonna help your, your content stand out. 
okay? Because you're covering everything uh, that people are looking for, right? So number six, you wanna provide answers to what people are actually searching for on Google or YouTube or on the forum. So this is similar to number five, um, if you actually do a, a search for the keyword, so generally there is a section like this, like people also ask. Um, so you can include this within your content. And what you can also do is scroll down to the bottom part and you can see other you know searches that people do as well. And what you can also do is you can actually search up different forums. I think like Reddit forums and things like that. You can see what people are asking and also go to YouTube and watch the uh, videos on the actual review on the product and then you can discuss the concerns that people actually have. So number seven, you wanna make sure that your content is thorough and complete. Try to cover the entire uh, topic really thoroughly, okay? Try to create the best thing possible that you can, okay? Your content is your product. Number eight, you wanna make sure it's well formatted. So for example, you don't want like a huge chunk of text. You wanna make sure you break it down into different subheadings and make sure it's very, very easy to digest, okay? So people don't like reading like huge chunks of text and you know if people see that then they're going to click off your website and then that's going to give google a negative signal for your website because people are clicking off your website right so google is going to take that into consideration in ranking your content as well number nine you want to include supporting images and also screenshots videos and maybe quotes and references to sort of uh, enhance your content a little bit right because people don't want to read just a bunch of text they want to look at some images and you know make it more interesting for them and make it easier for them to actually read again okay so that's really really important number 10 you want to include not just the good but also the bad as well like if you're writing a review don't just write all the good points you should also write some bad points as well that just adds some credibility to to what you're saying okay so if people see that you're just you know writing all the good stuff then you know people aren't going to trust you so people aren't going to read all your content and things like that. So you don't just want to be like, okay, this product is absolutely amazing and you have no downsides whatsoever. Then I don't think that's very, very good. Right. But then on the other hand, you do want to have like, if there is some bad points, sometimes it's not necessarily bad uh, for everyone. So for me, I used to like, really like, if I, if I don't like a product, then I would say like, okay, I don't like it. But the thing is like, there's different types of users. So let's say, for example, you're creating content about TubeBuddy, right? You're writing a review. So the users of TubeBuddy, there, there are different types of users. For example, you might have an 18-year-old who has a gaming channel, but then you might have a, like a 36-year-old who has a business channel. So everyone is sort of different. So you have to try and uh, think about you know, their needs, right? You have to think about, okay, is this product good for them? Maybe it's not good for you. Maybe you should get this product. You have to try and think of it like that, okay? because sometimes one product might be good for one person, one product might be bad for another. So for example, if, uh, let's say for example, uh, I like BMWs, right? But then someone might not like BMW because of X, Y, and Z. Maybe you recommend like a, you know, a different car, maybe like a Japanese car or something like that because of X, Y, and Z, okay? So there's not necessarily uh, just like bad all the way and not necessarily good all the way. So having both, you know, addressing both points is gonna help with your credibility and also help people make the right decision as well, okay? So those are just some of the key elements of creating great content. So what I wanna discuss right now is the content creation process. So I wanna help you guys break down everything step-by-step, day-by-day, so that you guys can have like an action plan of creating content. Because I know that, you know, creating content might be quite scary, but honestly, it's not as hard if you break it down step-by-step, day-by-day, right? If you try to do everything one day, you're gonna get completely overwhelmed and you're probably not gonna take any action. And if you really wanna succeed with affiliate marketing, it's about actually producing content and taking action, right? So day number one, you can focus on keyword and competition research. So you can use Ahrefs to do keyword research and you can look through all the different websites and you know research the different uh, keywords that you can target as well. And you can use uh, Millanote to jot down all your ideas and brainstorm, you know, find out, you know, what they're doing well, what they're not doing well, you know, what can you improve on and things like that, or any other information that you might need, right? Because you might have a lot of things in your head, so it's really good to actually just write that down and then you can come back to it later on. So then what you could do for day two is you could do product research and also testing of the products. So depending on the product and depending on the competition, it may take longer for the testing and things like that. It may take a week or it might take two weeks. It really depends on what type of product that you wanna promote as well, okay? Because you wanna gain as much product knowledge as possible. That way, the content that you create is gonna be really good, all right? So day three, you can start writing 
you know, your titles, your introduction, your different subheadings, and you can also create your featured image, right? So what I recommend is writing all your content in uh, Google Docs first, because that way you have it saved, right? You don't really want to write directly on uh, WordPress because it's not as easy to sort of edit your content there, okay? So you want to have your content ready in Google Doc, and then you want to transfer it once it's all done, okay? So you could write out your title, um, and then you could also get your affiliate links as well. So generally, um, you should apply to join the affiliate program by now. So most of the time when you join the affiliate program, it's gonna be like an in-house affiliate program, and you can just get the affiliate link directly uh, from the dashboard area. Sometimes the uh, affiliate program might be like a affiliate network that you have to join, and then it, it does take like a day or two to get approved. Once you get approved, then get the affiliate link, and then you can paste it into here, okay? So what I also like to do is I like to write out, you know, who is reading this post, okay? Because that's gonna give me a very clear direction of, you know, who am I writing for? So you can also write out your introduction and then you can also write out all the different subheadings. So you don't have to write everything right now, but you can write out the different subheadings based on your keyword research. And then once you've done that, then you can create your blog post featured image. So your blog post featured image is like the image like this, right? You got your blog post and then you need an image uh, that's gonna display on your blog, right? So you can either create it on canva.com or you could hire someone on Fiverr to actually do it for you. So you can search blog featured image and you can hire someone and think it starts from like five bucks or something like that, five to $10 for your blog post featured image. And then you can get that done. Okay, so that's probably gonna take, you know, 24 hours or 48 hours to get it done. And then once you've done that, day four, you can just focus in on writing. So just filling out, you know, all the subheadings that you have written, right? And you can just focus in on writing. So when you're writing, just pretend you're writing to a friend, right? Don't uh, overcomplicate it. I know a lot of people might be scared. You might be like thinking, you know, I'm not a good writer, but at the end of the day, we're just writing our opinion, okay? So don't try to overcomplicate it. Just focus on writing and over time, you'll get better at it, okay? When you first start out, you might not be the best, um, it's just gonna take time, just like if you were to learn tennis. So you're not gonna be the best tennis player overnight, okay? You're not gonna create the best chocolate cake overnight. So you have to keep on practicing and over time you'll get good at it, all right? And then the next day you can just focus on editing that content, making sure everything is well formatted and everything makes sense and you know, write out your conclusion and things like that and check all your work, all right? And then day six, you can focus in on adding different images, screenshots, uh, videos or different quotes and you know references for your article, okay? So to add some more sort of depth into it, okay? So if you wanna screenshot things, then what I recommend is going to getcloudapp.com. So this is a really awesome tool that's gonna to help you screenshot anything that you need. And you can also record uh, short videos and also GIF files as well. So for example, we click here, we can capture it, okay? Just like that, selecting the area. And then that's going to capture. Again, that's gonna upload directly to the server. And then you can use this to draw like arrows, okay? So you can also change the color to the color that you selected for your color palette earlier. You can also blur things out as well. So for example, like that, okay? So you can play around with the different settings. And once you're done, click on share, and then that's gonna upload, okay? So then you can paste in the URL. So you can share this with a friend, uh, especially if you're working with other people. This is a really, really awesome tool, okay? So you can download that onto your computer, okay? So what I recommend is creating like a special uh, folder with all your images. So when it comes to images, you always wanna make sure that you sort of uh, optimize the images so it's not the biggest file size. You wanna make sure that the image is not too big, otherwise your website's gonna load slowly, right? So this is another sort of ranking factor as well, um, the user experience factor, right? So with your website, you want it to make sure that it is loading quickly. And a big part of that is if you have too many images, it's gonna load slowly. So what you always wanna do is make sure you use Photoshop and either crop your images to a smaller size and you always wanna use the uh, JPEG file, okay? Unless you need a logo, then you might need a PNG, okay? So let's say for example, we got the image, let's just save that image. Okay, so let's just download that. All right, so what I recommend is naming your images appropriately. So that might be, uh, let's say, you know, a specific feature, okay, of TubeBuddy, okay? So feature one, all right? Because this is gonna be uh, for search engine purposes as well, all right? So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Then you wanna go to photo, okay? Um, or you can use Photoshop or any other tool that you guys use. And then we can, let's go grab that image and then we can drop that in, okay? 
And then over here, we can scroll down to resize and let's just resize it to, I think 1000. And you wanna make sure this is selected. So that way when you change it, the, uh, the height also changes. Okay, click on apply and then export. Okay, so you probably need to log in. Okay, and then we can save it as normal quality. So generally that should be enough and download it. Okay, let's save it. Right, so if we compare the file size, if we look at the file size over here, uh, so we've saved it as a PNG and that one is about 107 kilobytes. This one over here is about half that size. Okay, so that's gonna ensure that your website loads quickly. Otherwise, if you have too many images, then it's gonna be super slow. Okay, so that's a really important thing as well that you have to note. Then day seven, then you can focus on adding the actual content that you've written onto WordPress. So this is the next step that I'll actually show you. And then I'll show you guys how to optimize it for the search engines. Okay, so let's get into that right now. So once you finish writing all your content and also getting uh, ready all your images, ready to actually upload onto your website, then hopefully, you know, adding that content to our website won't be as hard. So with your images, I've basically cropped it to around 1000 pixels in width and they're all in JPEG format already, right? And the total file size for the whole entire folder is around two megabytes, okay? So generally you probably don't want your page size to be more than three megabytes, three to four megabytes. If it's that size, then you'll need to have a really, really uh, powerful web hosting server, for example, cloud hosting, otherwise your website's gonna load slow. What we're gonna do is add in our content. So we can hover over here and click on add post, or we can go to our dashboard area and we can go to the post over here, okay? And then click on add new. So let's click on that. Okay, so now if you don't see the dashboard, the left-hand panel, and also the top tab, then we can click on the three dots on the right-hand side and we can deselect the full screen mode. Okay, so generally I keep it like this. It's just a lot easier for me. So we've got our content uh, ready. So then all we need to do is just copy and paste basically. So copy and then just paste in your title. Scrolling down and we're gonna add in a new category. So this one is gonna be reviews. Okay, so if you have comparison, it might be comparison. If you have some other category, for example, like how to or tutorial or news, um, just write in your specific category and add new. And then make sure that is selected. Then we can go to tags. This is gonna be TubeBuddy. And then we're gonna do comma, TubeBuddy review. And then we might do YouTube growth tool something like that. And then for our featured image, so you should have created a featured image previously. So we're gonna click on that and then upload files, select files, and then we're gonna upload our featured image. So I personally got the featured image done on fiverr.com. So you can either get that done or you can just use Canva or Photoshop depending on what you guys use. So the file size for the image is 1,280 by 720 pixels. So we're gonna set that in and set featured image. So once we have done that, then over here we can click on discussion. And if you wanna you know, allow comments or not allow comments, you can disable it here as well. If you scroll down to Themify custom panel, over here you can actually set the specific layout for that blog post, all right? So you can do this later. Uh, we're gonna leave it as is for right now, okay? But I just wanted to show you guys that you can do that. Then the next step, we can click on publish. Okay, and then we can also uh, select this if you don't want to click on publish twice, right? So you can deselect it and then every time you click on publish, then it's published. So over here, uh, we can check our URL. Is this the URL that you want? Okay, so basically what we can do is close this and I wanna edit that URL a little bit because it is a bit too long. So I wanna keep it, try to keep it as short as possible. So TubeBuddy review, Let's do this. Okay, so let's just delete that. Okay, we're just gonna keep it as TubeBuddy review and then we're gonna update that. So just try to keep your URL structure uh, nice and clean. Uh, you don't wanna have like 2021 because then, you know, in 2022, then your URL will be outdated. So you don't really wanna change your URLs too often because it's gonna hurt your search engine rankings unless you sort of do some like redirection. But, you know, that's another thing that you need to do. Uh, what you wanna do is uh, make sure everything is done right uh, when you just start out, okay? So once you've done that, then let's check everything that looks all good. Let's update it and we can navigate by clicking on view post or we can just click on the URL like that. 
Okay, so this is our blog post. So what I wanna show you now is how to add in the content, for example, the text, images, videos, and your links. Then I'll show you guys how to style it. So change the layout and also change the colors to your branding. Okay, so what we can do is first of all, turn on the builder on the top, or you can turn it on over here. And then on the left, we've got the modules again. So generally, you know, there's quite a lot of modules, but you don't really need to use all of these. So most of the time I just use like the text module, video module, and the image module. So over here is where we can actually put in our content. So for example, uh, let's say for example, we want to add this content over here, which is our introduction. We can just copy it from Google Docs. And then I'm going to drag in the text module and drop it. And then I'm going to paste it and match style. Okay, so that is the introduction. And then what I'm going to do is do the next part. So what is TubeBuddy? So let's just copy that and then go over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on done and then add another text module. And then I can put in the title. So what is TubeBuddy? Now, this is really important. So we want to change it to heading two or you could change it to heading three or four but don't change it to heading one. So generally for each blog post and each page, you should only have one heading one and that's gonna be your title. Okay, so this is for search engine purposes. So for now, I think I might just do it as heading three. Okay, that looks okay. Let's click on save and then let's go ahead and paste in our content. So copy, come back over here. So we can just add it in that same module as well. So paste and match style, or you could just add in a new text module as well. So sometimes I think that looks okay. So what we're gonna do after is gonna add like a content section and it's gonna scroll to each of the different sections as well. So here, if you wanna add an image, all right, so let's add in our image. So we can drag in the image module just below that. And then what I wanna do is click on upload files, select files. And I want to upload all the images that I'm going to upload for this post. So that way I don't have to upload it individually again. So we're going to select all our images, except the, uh, this one, which we've added in before. And then what we could do is just click on open. Okay. So that's going to upload all our images that we need. So that way we don't have to, you know, keep on uploading images. Uh, everything is very, very streamlined. So the image that I want to pick is let's find it. I think it's this one. Okay, so this one over here, let's do insert file URL, and that's gonna insert our image. So we can also add in an alt tag over here. Okay, so this is maybe, you know, what is TrueBody? So what an alt tag does is that you can put in like, you know, the description of the image. So by default, Google doesn't really understand, you know, what your image is about. So if you add an alt tag, it's going to give an idea of, you know, what that image uh, represents. So then when Google actually scans the content on your uh, website, then they know, okay, this website is talking about TubeBuddy and things like that. Let's click on done. And then that is done. So then the next section is let's add this in over here, copy it. So this should be fairly simple. So what we're going to do is I'm going to keep on adding in that content. So we're going to add it in like that. So as you can see over here, it's probably too close. So what I like about uh, Themify is that you can actually hover over here and you can drag it like that. So I'm gonna drag it and maybe do 20 pixels or maybe 25, okay? So let's say if I do 25, then you know in the future, then all of it will be 25 as well. So that's gonna keep everything consistent and we can click on that and we can also align it into the middle like that as well. You can also go to styling and you can adjust it here as well. So they're both pretty much the same thing. So we can click on done. So next I'm going to show you guys how to add in the next sections. And I want to show you guys uh, up to, I think up to pros and cons, because I do want to show you guys how to style this section as well. So let's quickly add in the rest. So let's just grab all of this. Maybe let's just grab that one first copy. Let's go back over here. We can also duplicate the text modules like that if you want to. So then we can just paste it in. Uh, this one, we're going to reduce that size, uh, that spacing, and then we can also bold our text like this. Okay. Then the next section is going to be getting started with TubeBuddy. So what we want to do is we want to sort of add like a call to action. 
um, near the start of our blog post, which is going to include our affiliate link. So then people can click on their link. And then if they do purchase the product, then we can get a commission, right? So generally we don't want to have our affiliate links like at the end of a blog post. We want to have it within, you know, the blog post, maybe three to five times. So this one, let's just copy that. Let's come back over here. And let's just duplicate that post again. Let's click on that. And then let's just paste that in that match style. Let's change this to heading three again. Then the next section is going to be available on. So let's just try and copy that. Copy this and paste that in. Let's grab another text module, put that below there, paste that in. Okay, so sometimes the format be, might be off, so we need to try to reformat it ourselves a little bit. So what we can do to display this text is we can go to styling and then we can go to multi columns and set the column to two. Okay, so that's going to be like something like that. So actually what we're going to do is I'm actually going to click on this and maybe just, let's just remove that one. Oops, so like that. Click on that one and let's click enter, paste that in, change that to bold. Okay, so sometimes you do have to play around with it and fix it. Okay, so to try to make everything look nice. So let's go back over here. We're gonna add in a button. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's click on done. Let's go ahead and drop a button module just below here. And then we can change the button text. So install for free and then here we can put in our affiliate link so i'll show you guys how to cloak your affiliate link a little bit later right now we're just gonna you know put the actual affiliate link so an example of an affiliate link which is cloaked is something like this so we're on the food rangers blog and if you hover over the button over here get shoe buddy now you're gonna see the foodranger.com forward slash shoe buddy on the bottom left okay so that is an example so that just sort of cleans up your affiliate links. So sometimes when you do get affiliate links uh, from the affiliate program, it may be like a very, very long link. Okay, it does look kind of messy and people might not want to click it. Uh, so sometimes a lot of blogs and a lot of YouTubers actually cloak it like this. And I'll show you guys how to do that a little bit later. So we're just going to copy and paste that in for now. And we can edit that later. So, okay, so for the link, we just paste that in. Okay, so when people click on that link, it's going to redirect to TubeBuddy. So what we could do is probably just arrange it into the middle. So right now, uh, I'm just going to leave it as is, and I'll show you guys how to change the colors later when we style everything. So I might just add a little bit of spacing right now, maybe 20, 25. I think that looks okay. Let's go back over here. Okay, let's add in the rest of that. Let's just copy this and then click on done. Let's drag in another text module below that. Paste that in, add some padding, align it to the middle, come back over here. So let's get this done. Let's copy this. Actually, I'm gonna try and copy the whole bit. Just copy that. And then let's go ahead, drag in another text module below that, and then paste that in. Who uses TubeBuddy, change that to heading three. Okay, so if we want to sort of link a text, so for example, I'm gonna click on this and let's copy that link. Okay, so if you wanna add a link in WordPress and the editor, so we could just highlight the, the text, okay, and click on insert link, and then we could just paste that in. So generally what I do is click on link options and I paste it in like that. And then because this is linking to uh, someone else's uh, external link, then I wanna open link in a new tab because generally I wanna keep people on my website. If it's like a link within my own website, then I'll just do it without this. Add link. And then uh, you can do it for the rest of these ones. So that's just the basics of it. Now you can also add affiliate links like that as well. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you like each and every one. You're gonna have to do that yourself. So let's go back over here. Let's add this one in, copy that, and let's see, let's just add the whole thing. Done, drop in a text module. Let's paste that in. Changes to maybe heading, oops, that's not good. Control Z, okay. Maybe hit enter. Let's change it to heading three. 
and then what we need to do is let's try to format that properly like that okay um let's just leave that right now let's go back over here okay and then maybe i might have another text so get started with you buddy maybe that might not be a button though so let's click on that and then just have it like that paste that in let's move it to the middle and then if we want to copy the affiliate link again just copy that paste that in so everything that i'm showing you now is like the actual work that you need to do to become successful with making a affiliate marketing website right so there's so many videos on youtube that just show you like you know just like the concept of it but you actually have to do the work right so this is part of the work um and yeah it's just all everything that you need to know so let's go down over here and let's add in the pros and cons so if you want to display your pros and cons so we can display it in a few ways so let's go back over here so what i'm going to do actually is add a new row okay something like that and then i'm going to separate it into two columns okay two columns like that one on the left one on the right let's do a text module again paste that in and then we're gonna copy that like that and then we can come back over here let's paste that in okay let's change that to heading three oops Let's drop a space first, change that to heading three, or maybe try heading two. Uh, maybe heading three, actually. So then we can go back over here, copy that, and then we can just duplicate that one, drop that one over, click this in, select all, and maybe just paste the match style. Oops, that's not good. Uh, let's just delete that first, paste the match style, click on enter, change this to heading three, save it let's click on this and okay so for the rest of this stuff uh, you can pretty much do that yourself so the next thing that I want to show you now is how to actually style your blog post so I'm gonna add in a bit more content and then I'll show you guys how to style it and make it look really really nice okay so I've added in some more content so what I want to show you now is how to add in like a content section something like this over here where people can actually click on it and it can scroll down to the different sections. So this is gonna to add to the user experience of your blog post and your website. So let's go back over here and then let's turn on our builder. So this is actually really simple to add. So we can actually drop in, let's say a text module. Let's say we wanna drop it over here. Oops, let's move it back. Okay, so just above what is TubeBuddy. So over here, we can label this uh, content Let's change it to heading four, like that. And then what we wanna do is we wanna look back at our article and we can start adding in sort of all the different uh, sections. So for example, what is TubeBuddy? So for example, copy that. And then we can start adding all the different sections in manually and maybe who uses it, like that. And then we could do the next section, which is gonna be, let's say, Okay, so pros and cons. So, or maybe getting, uh, wait, wait a second. I think we're missing something. Uh, what is TubeBuddy? Pros and cons. Pros and cons. Enter. So I'm just gonna quickly add all these in. Okay, so you can add your uh, content section in as well. And then I'll show you guys how to style it properly and link it to the different sections. So right now I've just added in everything like that. Okay, so it's all in one column. So as you can see on the right hand side, there's a lot of space over here. So what we can actually do is, I think we need to fix this text over here first. So let's click on enter. So what we could do is click on styling. Okay, and then go to multi columns and set the column to two. So sometimes you can set it to three depending on how you wanna display it. I think that is okay as well. So I might just put it as two though. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna add a background color. So as you can see over here, we've got a nice background color. So what we wanna do is go back to our Miller note. And if you have your color palette selected, then we could just copy the color code. Okay, come back over here, go to background, and we're gonna paste in the color like that, all right? So what I like to do is I click on it, 
Okay, I'm going to drop the opacity down to let's say 0 0.0.1 or 0 0.15 maybe like that. And then what we could do is actually I'm going to put 0 0.1 for now. And then we could go and go to border and then paste in the color on the left. Okay, so paste in the color there and then we're going to set it to 4. So as you can see, it's a bit too close to the edges. So what we want to do is add some padding. So let's click on padding on here. So padding is just space. So we could just drag it and move it in like that. So we can try maybe 20. So as you can see, it's a bit uneven. So maybe what we could do is make sure we adjust it a little bit. Let's see. So we're going to deselect this. For the bottom, I'm going to change it to maybe 10. Okay, so I think that looks a little bit better or maybe even five, something like that. So everything looks really, really nice now. So how do you actually link the different sections to each of the different sections over here? So what you can do is you can link it two ways. So for example, if we want to link it to this section over here, we can, let's set in the uh, link ID first. So let's click into the text module, edit. And then for the ID name, we're going to label it what is. And then we're going to copy it to our clipboard. Let's click over here again and then select this text. Okay, we're going to paste in this. So we're going to type in hash first and then paste it in. And then we're going to click on apply. Okay, so that's going to add a link. So if people click on it, then it's going to scroll down to the this section over here, hopefully. So let's click on save and we're going to close it. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit, click over there. And as you can see, it's going to scroll to this module over here. So if we actually click it, it's going to scroll past the title area. So what we want to do is actually scroll it to the, to the row. Okay, so we can turn on the builder. So if we actually zoom out, then what you're going to notice is that uh, all this content is in one uh, row. Okay, so over here, when you hover over it, as you can see this purple, that's the second row. So this is actually in one row. So what I want to do is scroll to the very bottom and I'm going to add a new row like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it and drag it up. Okay, so hold on to it, click it, drag it up to the very top. And I sort of want to separate it into two different rows like that. Okay, so I'm going to drag this content over here, drag this one over here on the top. Okay, so now it's in number one row and then number two over here. So I'm also going to add a little bit of spacing on the top like that. So maybe 25. So instead of linking it to the text module, I want to, let's just cut this and click on done. I want to link it to the row. So we're going to hover over here, row options and set the row anchor to, oops, let's row options and paste that in. So that's going to set in the location to the row. Let's click on save and we can close that. So as you can see, it's going to scroll down to the row. So if we click on that, okay, and that's going to look really good. So what you can actually do is you can make it scroll down to either the text module or the row. So sometimes uh, if we actually turn on the builder, let's say we want to scroll it to the summary section. Okay, so we don't actually have a summary here. So let's just do maybe summary and then we can set the link summary like that and then we can scroll down and we can actually scroll it to the sort of the text module above so we can scroll like this and then label this summary click on done save it and then close it so if we click on it like that then it's going to scroll sort of like that okay which is okay as well so you can do it both ways, scroll it to the row or scroll it to the text module. So what you can do is you can individually uh, do it for each one. Okay, so what I wanna show you now is how to actually change the link color. So as you can see, the link color is red and you know that's not part of my color scheme that I've actually set in here. So what I'm gonna try and do is maybe change the color to this, copy that. Okay, let's go ahead and go over here, customize. And I'm going to try and change the color uh, universally. Okay, so that means I don't have to change it, you know, for each individual module. So let's click on, let's go to body 
and body link. Okay, let's paste in the module like that. Okay, so as you can see, that color is really, really nice. Okay, so everything looks, you know, blends in really well with my color scheme. So that is that. Then we can click on publish. And then for the link hover, what we can do is we can also set it to this one. So dark green. Okay. And we can paste that in like that. So when people hover over it, it's like this dark green. Okay. So you can adjust it a little bit as well. So maybe sometimes I actually just take this color over here. Okay. So we can actually go to a website called zero to 255 and we can paste in the color over here, click on next. And then what we could do is it's going to give us shades of the same color. So what I like to do is pick maybe two to three shades darker for the link hover. Okay. So this is like a uh, web design. Okay. So, you know, you're learning a bit of everything here and it's honestly what you actually need uh, to know. So you need to know, you know, a little bit about keyword research, a little bit about building a website, a little bit about design and everything like that. So as you can see, it just makes it a little bit darker. It's very, very subtle, but it looks really, really nice. Click on publish. And while I'm here, I'm actually going to change the color scheme for the entire website as well. So we're going to start from the top. Okay. So for the headings, let's click on, okay. So that is the main navigation. So over here, menu link. Okay. Let's just select the green color. Okay. So it didn't actually save yet because I need to exit out of it perhaps. So we're just going to copy that, paste that in. Oops. That is actually the background color. Put it into here like that. Um, I think that looks okay ish. Okay. So we can actually keep it like that, or we could just do perhaps just for the menu link hover and we could do something like that. Right. So it hovers like that color. So I'm actually going to go back over here make sure this one is saved as well. Um, and then click on publish. Then if you're scrolling down, as you can see, you can see the back to top button. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that uh, back to top button color. So let's go to advanced and then scroll down to footer and then look for back to top button. Okay. For the color, we're going to select this one. Okay. The dark, oops, that's not the one that I want. So we want that for the background color. And then we want to change that to white, something like that. Okay. So that looks really, really nice. So you can either pick like an orange color, which is also part of my color scheme up to you, right? So just try and keep everything consistent as possible. Um, I think that is looking pretty decent. Okay. Let's click on publish. So what I want to do is maybe I want to change the footer color. Okay. So what we could do is go to footer wrap. Let's go to background color and maybe select that color like that. Okay. And then what I can do is I'm going to change the, the link color within there. So let's put a font, change that to white. And then for the link color, for the link, let's change that to white again. Okay. So that looks really, really nice. We're going to click on publish. And yeah, so that's basically how you actually change the colors on your website. So you can control each of the different sections over here. So let's close that for a second. Let's go to our blog. Okay. So as you can see, we can't actually see our blog post yet. So what we need to do is turn on the builder and actually display our blog post. So what we could do is click on the post over here and drag it in like that. And now you can actually see the blog post, right? So we can actually change, you know, how we want to display it like that. And then what we could do is click on save. And then what we can do is I'm going to actually change that uh, hover color as well. So let's click on close and let's click into that first. Okay. So I want to change that hover color. Let's go to customize. Okay. So I want to click on post and then that's going to be the post title over here for the post title hover. We're going to change it to the green. So that maybe the dark green perhaps. Uh, whoops, that's the background color. Okay. That's should be the font color like that. Okay. So maybe something like that. And then for the post title, we can also align it into the middle like that. Uh, looks quite nice. And then for the post date, we can also change that as well. So let's minimize all that and let's go to post date. We can also change the background color of that. So for me, I don't really want this rounded version of it. So I'll show you guys how to change it. 
So what else do we need to change? So let's scroll down to the bottom. Okay, so over here, how do you change the color over here? So we can go to forms, and then this is gonna be the form button. And then for the background, let's just change it to the green like that. And then maybe the hover color, let's change it to the dark green. Okay, so that's gonna look really, really nice and subtle. Okay, everything's consistent on our website. Then we can actually click on publish. And then let's go and click on close. So I wanna change this, okay, to an inline sort of uh, date. So let's go back to our dashboard. So I just open up in a new tab. Let's go to Themify Ultra, Themify Settings. And then over here, we can go to Default Layouts, Default Single Post Layout. And then what we could do here is we can either hide the post date if you want to, or change it to inline text. Click on Save, and then we can refresh it. And then it looks something like that. Okay, so it's really, really awesome, this theme. That's why I highly recommend it because you can literally create any type of website, any type of theme that you want, right? It's so customizable. Otherwise, if you you know pick a theme, then some, sometimes you wanna change something and you can't really change the thing. You need to change the entire theme, right? So that's why this theme is so good. So over here, this is the meta description. Now you can definitely hide it if you want to. So for example, we could hide you know the author, save it and let's close it and then that's going to disappear like that um, you can also hide you know the different sections like categories and tags like that as well maybe i just might keep it but what i want to do is probably move it into the middle and i would probably want to let's say maybe let's let's just not hide that one okay and then we're going to click on save okay so what i want to do is change my name though because right now it's just my email so Let's go to users over here, click on edits, and then I'm gonna set my name. So Hogan Chua, and then display publicly as maybe Hogan or Hogan Chua, doesn't really matter. Okay, and then here you can also change and uh, you set your password as well. Let's click on update. Let's go back over here and refresh. Okay, so that's gonna be like my name, uh, the category and the tags. So let's just go to customize again move that into the middle, scroll down to post, and this is gonna be the post meta. Okay, move that into the middle, and hopefully that is good to go. So what we're gonna do now is, I wanna show you guys how to style something which is really important, so let's close that and close it. Now if we go to um, some websites, as you can see with the image, you've got like a nice little border on that image. It just makes everything very, very professional and just polished. So how do you actually achieve that? So we can go back over here. We can do that as well. So turn on the builder. So you can do it two ways. We can click on the image module and we could do like, uh, let's say boarded like that. But the border is a little bit thin to be honest. Um, we could also do drop shadow if you want it to display like that. Or we could just go to styling. And then what we could do is we could add a border. So click on border and then we could do all so over here, what we could do is use a light gray. So something like something like that should be all right. And then here we can set in the thickness, which is three pixels. Okay, then you got like a nice border like that. So that looks really, really cool. Uh, it could be like four pixels. It really depends on what you want. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go over here. Maybe let's drop it down a little bit. So maybe something like that. And then I'm just gonna add that to my color palette as well so I can use it whenever I need. So once you're done, click on done. Okay, so how do you actually add it to the other images, right? So you don't really wanna add it individually because that's gonna take too long. So what you can do is you can right click and we can copy. Okay, so that's gonna copy the styling. So let's go to the different images on your website, right click, and then we're gonna paste, paste styling. Okay, so as you can see, it's applied already to this image and we can scroll down and we could right click again and then we could do paste styling and then, you know, and so on. Okay, so that's gonna make it look really, really cool. Let's zoom out, okay, so that's what it actually looks like. Okay, so uh, make sure you zoom out of your layout and make sure like all your spacing is all, you know, all good. Okay, so you can just play around with the spacing like that. And let's say, for example, we wanna add, you know, some uh, social media sharing links. So let's drag the social share 
and we could drag it below that or something like that. And then we could do, you know, Facebook, Twitter, uh, maybe LinkedIn. And then we could do, let's say, squared. And then we could do styling. And then we could move it into the middle, hopefully, like that. Let's decrease the spacing, actually. Let's zoom back in. So I think that looks not too bad. We can also change the color if you want to. Uh, I think that is going to be the icon and then we could do background color and then we could do something like that, green or maybe dark green. Okay, so that really depends on what you want really. Um, I think that looks not too bad actually. Uh, yeah, so that really depends on what you want. Okay, and then what you could do is you can also add the social sharing on the bottom of your page as well. Just duplicate it zoom out and then we can click on it and then we could drag it anywhere that we want okay so we could drag it onto the bottom of our blog post like that and we can also rearrange it to maybe something like that so i'm just going to leave it as is i'm going to delete that okay let's click on save whoops what did i actually delete we can also undo over here okay let's save it and then we can close it so before i actually show you guys how to customize the sidebar section I sort of want to show you guys, uh, we're going to change the button over here. Okay, so we're going to add some like calls to actions within our blog post and we need to change the color. So we can click into the button module and we can change the color over here, but you've got limited options, right? So I'm going to select transparent and then let's go to styling. Let's go to button link, background. So I'm not going to select green uh, for this one. I want to select the color that stands out a little bit, which is maybe the orange, okay? So I'm going to use something that stands out. Now you could use red or depending on what you want. Okay, so let's paste that in. Okay, so that's going to stand out a bit more. So then the next thing is the link color. We're going to change that to white. Okay, and then for the hover color, let's just change it to a darker orange. Copy that and then we can paste that in. Okay, then what we could do is make sure we add that to our color palette. Same thing for this one add that in, okay? And then here, get started with TrueBody. So we could change this uh, link color as well manually. So let's go to styling, go to link, and then for the link color, change it like that. And then for the hover, we can change it like that, okay? So then we could also make it a little bit bigger. So like heading two or maybe not, maybe heading, yeah, maybe at heading four or heading three, okay? Something like that. So you can rearrange it um, and then we could make it less bold maybe. Yep, something like that and save it, okay? So the next section, I wanna show you guys how to configure your sidebar section. So you could add like a image and you could add like an advertisement, a banner ad, also an affiliate link. Um, and then also uh, show your categories and fully customize the section over here. So let's click on save and let's close. So to edit your sidebar, we need to go to the dashboard area. We can also just go to widgets uh, directly. So this is gonna take us to the appearance and widget section, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna edit the, I think this one, sidebar section, okay? So for the recent post, uh, we're gonna delete it. Recent comments, we're gonna delete that as well. Let's navigate over here to see what I wanna show. So I might include like a profile image or a little bit about us, uh, really depends. I think it adds some extra trust uh, for your content as well. So let's just drag in a image module from here. Let's add an image and maybe let's add this one over here. That's okay. Insert that in there, save it. Click on done. And then we could add in a text as well. So over here, so about me, and then you could write a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab some dummy text for now. Copy that and paste that in. Okay, so you can use it and you can bold it. You can also link it as well. So save, click on done. Now, if you wanna add, let's say a affiliate link. So for example, uh, we could add a banner. So I'll show you guys how to add a banner. So for your banner, there's actually two ways of doing it. So sometimes the affiliate program might actually give you a sort of custom HTML that you can add in. So for example, for the Amazon Associates, uh, we can actually click over here, 
and we're gonna go and click on build link and then over here right it's got the HTML for that product so it's gonna include the image as well as your field link all tied together with the shop now button and things like that or you could click on the image only and you could also paste that in so this is the HTML so we can copy it all right and then we can go over here and then we could drop in custom HTML and then paste that in like that and click on save okay so or you can just do it manually so for example if you have your own image so for example drop it below add image and upload files select files and then let's just add in the tube buddy logo okay and then we could add to widget like that and then over here we can just put in our fillet link manually so for example okay we're going to grab our affiliate link so copy that and then come back over here and then we just paste that in and save click on done so now we can actually go back over here and let's see if we can refresh it so here's got an image about me and then you've got your amazon link okay so that's the html that you've added in and then this is the tube buddy one that you've added in manually okay so both of these if we click on it it's going to link and it's going to um, take you over here. The other one is going to take you to TubeBuddy. Okay, so yeah, so for that one, actually, what I want to do is I probably want to open that in a new tab if I can. Um, let's see. Edit image, advanced options. Okay, let's open that in a new tab. Update and save. Okay, let's go back over here. Let's refresh that. And then let's click that. Okay, that's going to open a new tab. So that's what we want. Okay, so that is pretty much it for your sidebar. Um, we can also add in like categories as well. So for example, uh, where is it? Categories over here. We could drop that in below. Okay, and then you could uh, arrange it. Okay, so you can click on done. You could also do like the most popular post. So for example, I think this one featured post. Okay. So drop that in like that. And you can also set the thumbnail size. So for the thumbnail, it's gonna be 128 by 720, okay, 72, sorry. And then we could do uh, display the post thumbnail. Uh, you could also uh, not display it. So we can relabel it like most popular. And then we could save it. And then let's see what that looks like, okay? Let's refresh it and then that looks like like that okay so you could do that as well we can also remove the post thumbnail done refresh it okay so this is something that you can play around uh, with yourself so you're not going to break anything so you can just rearrange it and you can play around with the different uh, widgets and display it okay so part number six I'm going to be going through on page search engine optimization as well as off page optimization so this part is really really important because it's going to help us uh, rank our website on Google, right? We want to make sure that on our website, it is fully optimized so that when Google scans our website, then they know exactly what our website is about and it has all the best settings. So we're going to go through that and then I'll go through off page optimization, which is basically getting backlinks to your website. So generally the more backlinks you have on your website, the higher that your website is going to rank. So I'm going to go through that in detail uh, a little bit later. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install a plugin called Yoast SEO. So we're going to go to dashboard. So this is a plugin that is basically going to help us optimize our uh, website on our page. So when we hover over plugins over here, click on add new and we're going to search for Yoast and click on enter. So it should be this one over here, Yoast SEO by team Yoast and it has over 5 million active installations install. So once that is installed, then we need to make sure we activate it just by clicking on activate and it should show the little icon on the top. So the next thing we need to do is click on post and we want to make sure that all our posts and pages are well optimized. Okay. So if it's like your affiliate disclaimer page or your about page, you might not really need to uh, sort of optimize it that much because you're not really trying to rank that on Google, right? So if it's like a review post and you want to make affiliate commissions from it, then you want to make sure that it is fully optimized, right? So we can click on edits. So on the right hand side, Yoast will actually show up like that. Um, you can also click back onto the gear icon to display the old uh, display panel. Okay, so what I generally like to do is just scroll down to the very bottom 
and you've also got the Yoast panel um, down here as well. Okay, so scroll down to the bottom of the post and navigate over here. So the first thing you'll need to do is put in a focus key phrase. So this is going to be the keyword that you want to target for your page or your post. So for example, it's going to be TubeBuddy review. So what Yoast basically does, it's going to take that keyword and it's going to scan the content on your page and it's going to provide us of a simple checklist to follow. So if we actually click on SEO analysis, then you can see uh, some of the problems and the things that we've also done well, okay, already. And it's going to provide us a simple checklist that we just follow um, step by step to make sure our page is well optimized uh, for this specific key phrase over here. Okay, so I'm just going to go through each of the different settings that you should have optimized. So the most important thing is you want to make sure that your focus key phrase is in your title. So for most of you, it should already be um, your post title already. So um, if you don't have your keyword in there, you want to make sure you have your keyword uh, in there and try to keep it at the front of your title as well. Okay, so true body review and then you could have, you know, what is it and should you use it or anything like that after that. Okay, because this is going to be really important if, you know, someone searches true body review and they look at your title and you don't have it within, you know, your title, then they're probably not going to click into that. Okay, so that's going to be a really, really important factor. So the next thing that you want to do is if you want to edit manually, you can do that as well just by navigating to SEO title and deleting that and just typing that in. So TubeBuddy review and then you could do is it really worth your money. Okay, so you want to make sure your title is also um, has your keyword, but it's also like enticing for someone to actually click into. Okay, so for me, I'm just going to have it as the default one. So I'm going to put the variable in there and it's just going to take it from my post title uh, and add it there. Okay. So for your meta description, by default, it's going to just uh, take a random snippet um, of a piece of content on your website and include it in your meta description. So this is uh, the description over here. Okay. So we can go over here and we can type in a meta description uh, that we want. Okay. So we could do like in this true body review will be taking an in-depth look at all the features and benefits and then maybe like does it really get you more views find out here something like that okay so with your uh, meta description I generally try to include the the keyword in there as well okay and it's one of the uh, checklist items over here as well um, but if you can't include it naturally then you don't have to right so with these different things um, besides the sort of the the title uh, here like sometimes if you don't get it 100% then it's okay right you don't need to like have everything 100% optimized. So if you have like 80% of them, like, you know, green, then it should be pretty much good to go. Okay. So here we can actually just look through the different things and just fix it. Okay. So as you can see, I already have a lot of these green now, mainly because I've done this a lot of times and actually, you know, when I'm creating content, then I'm really aware of it and I'll try to actually do it already. So let's say for example, you want to fix something, then let's say for example, this one, your key phrase uh, does not appear in the first paragraph, then you can actually fix it. Okay. Sometimes you might not have any outbound links, uh, which is like linking outside your own website and internal links, which is in linking uh, within your own website. You might not have it. So I'll show you guys how to fix that. And for example, the image alt attributes. Okay. So you can just work through this yourself as well. I'm going to click on update and then I'm going to click on view post. Okay, so just turn your builder and if you want to fix something, it's fairly easy. Let's just say, for example, you want to add, you know, your keyword within the first paragraph, just click into the first paragraph and try to include it uh, within the content naturally, right? You don't want to just like squeeze it in anywhere. You want to make sure that the sentence actually makes sense. Okay, so if you can't do it, then don't do it, right? So if you want to add, let's say, for example, um, the, the, the link, so an external link, um, outbound link, then let's say, for example, we can link misinformation, click on the link over here, click on link options, and then you can put in your URL over here and link it up. 
Okay, so most of the time for outbound links or external links, I'm gonna open it in a new tab, mainly because I wanna keep people on my own website, and then we can click on add link. Now, if you wanna add an internal link, let's say for example, you have another article about uh, YouTube growth and how to grow your channel. So maybe I can link you know, this keyword to that page. So people can click into it and they can read about that content. So it also has to make sense, right? It has to be relevant um, before you link anything. So we can click over here, click on that. And then over here, we can just search for our content. So for example, if you have you know, the content and you know the title, you can just type in the title. So let's say for example, we're gonna link it to our about page, right? Then we can actually just click it like that and it's gonna link up. Okay, so for an internal link, a link on our own website, I'm gonna just uh, link it as is without opening in a new tab, okay? and add link like that, okay? So the other thing is for the image alt tags. So if we click into an image that we've added, you can add the alt tag over here. So by default, when Google actually scans your website and they look at images, they can't really read you know, what that image is about. So that's why you know, alt tags are important. Um, it basically gives like a little description on the image so that when they read the alt tag, then they know, you know what that image is about, all right? So you can add your alt tag over here Okay, and click on done. So those are just the basics uh, that you need to do. So once you've done it, you can just save it and you can click back to the back end of that post. Okay, and then you can scroll down and you can try and work through, you know, the different other things that need to be fixed as well. Okay, so as you can see, it says your key phrase does not appear to be in the first paragraph. Um, but if we actually go to our page over here, you'll notice that, you know, it does uh, include it within our first paragraph actually, All right? Same thing over here. Okay, that should be the first paragraph. I think it might actually be because we've got content on the right hand side and for some reason, you know, Yoast SEO might be reading that and they can't actually see um, they read this content over here. Okay, so don't worry about it if you can't do it. Um, as long as, you know, you've included it over here, then what really matters is that Google just scans the uh, sort of the back end of your website and they'll know that it's actually included there, okay? So Yoast SEO is just like a checklist tool. It's not like a tool that tells Google, you know, uh, where uh, your keyword actually is, right? So it's just basically there to actually just help you, right? So if we go back over here, then you can go through each of these uh, different things and fix it. Once you're done, just click on update. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna click on plugins and we wanna install a Google Site Kit. So what we wanna do is connect our website with Google Analytics and also the Google Search Console. So basically, if you actually search our website right now, so we take the URL and let's type in our URL over here. Just paste that in. Let's type site and colon, hit on enter. So what we wanna do is try and index our website. Okay, so what we need to do is install uh, Google Search Console and add our website over there, okay? So if we go back over here, okay, so we're gonna click on add new, and then we're gonna search for Google Site Kit, hit on enter, and then we're gonna install this, right? So it's gonna help us uh, connect Google Analytics and also the Search Console really, really easily. So with Google Analytics, you're able to track how many visitors are coming to your website and what they're actually doing on your website, how long they're staying. So basically, once you actually have that information, then you can figure out how you can actually improve your content and your website and things like that by looking at the statistics, okay? So once that is installed, click on activate. So what you also wanna do is make sure to actually log into your Gmail or your Google account. And once you've done that, then we can just click on start setup and then we can just sign in with Google. And then I'm gonna select my Gmail account. Just allow that and allow that. Scroll down and allow that. Okay, so now it just needs to verify uh, ownership of your website and that's gonna add, they're gonna add a HTML code uh, with the actual plugin. So click on proceed and then click on allow and then we can add the site and then that is done. Okay, so go to my dashboard. Okay, so it's connected with Google Search Console. So the next thing I wanna connect is Google Analytics, right? So it's gonna track your visitors. So click and connect service and select your accounts and select your account. Just allow that and then allow. 
Okay, so it's gonna create a new account for us and our account is gonna be maybe just affiliate tutorial. So this should be your, uh, basically your website name or your company name. Okay, this is the website and you can set in your country and time zone and create account. Let's select that one. Allow. So we're just gonna select my country here, Australia. Um, accept the terms of service and then accept go to my dashboard okay so that is pretty much done right so that's gonna uh, start gathering the analytics data once you know you have a few visitors coming onto your website so let's say for example uh, what we could do is we can search for the page so our page is tube body oops tube body review and then we can click into that and view data. And that's gonna give us, you know, how many visitors are coming to your website, uh, how long they're staying for, you know, are they clicking on other uh, pieces of content on your website or they're, are they just leaving? Okay, so once you do have visitors, then it's gonna show over here. And then you can start looking at the data and, you know, optimizing your website and making it better, improving it and things like that. So the other thing that we wanna do is we wanna submit a sitemap file. So basically this is gonna help Google better understand how to crawl our website. And you know when we, when we publish uh, new content, then hopefully it's gonna index our pages a lot quicker as well. So this is really important. So we can go back over here and what we can do is go to Yoast, right? So go Yoast over here, click on general tab, go to features and then for the XML sitemap, we can click on the uh, question mark, okay? And then see the XML sitemap, and it's gonna redirect us over here, okay? So we could just copy this URL, just the last part of it, okay? So sitemap-index.xml, uh, right? Just copy that, and you should receive an email, and you can also just click on submit a sitemap, or you can just go and search Google Search Console and log in, okay? So I'm just gonna click on start here, and we can navigate to sitemaps on the left, okay? And then just paste in the URL, okay? So our website, sitemap over there, submit. Okay, let's click on got it. That should be good to go. So let's go back over here. And that is pretty much it for your on-page search engine optimization. So make sure you optimize all the posts and pages that you want to rank, uh, rank for. Okay, so for the other pages, which aren't as important, like your about, affiliate disclaimer, um, you don't really have to optimize those ones. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is your off-page SEO, which is basically getting backlinks to your website. So backlinks act like a vote for your website, and generally the more backlinks you have, so the more sort of popular your website is, and the higher Google actually rank your pages and your website. Okay, so what I wanna talk about now is off-page SEO, which stands for off-page search engine optimization. So it's everything that we do off our website. And that basically means getting backlinks to our website, right? So I wanna explain a little bit about what backlinks are first. So for example, um, in this article in Neil Patel's blog, in his article within here, there's links, right? So if you click on that link, then it's linking to another website. And that is basically a backlink. Now, generally the more backlinks that you have to your website, so for example, we have a lot of backlinks to our website over here, that means that it tells Google that our website is popular and therefore it should rank it higher. Okay, so that's the general sort of idea behind backlinks. So we need to have good on-page optimization. So we need to have good content and make sure that it is fully optimized so that when Google scans our website, then it knows what we're talking about. Then it needs some backlinks to tell Google that, okay, our website is more popular than other websites. So it's also really important to note that not all backlinks are created equal and each backlink have sort of different weights to them and how much they're actually worth and how much they'll actually increase your ranking by. Right, so one of the factors is the sort of uh, domain authority of a website. So if you were to actually get a link from Neil Patel's blog, which is a very, very authoritative website with a lot of trust, and it also has a lot of traffic as well, then it's gonna be worth a lot more than if you were to get a link from a less established website. And another factor is the location of the link. So if the link is within the content itself, just like this, then it's gonna be worth more than if the link is coming from like the footer section, 
It's like a sort of like a profile link that you get from your Facebook page. Basically links which are harder to actually obtain, which is links within the content, it's gonna be worth more than links which are easier to obtain. So for example, if you were to get a link from maybe like a blog comment, um, then it's gonna be worth less, okay? So that's really, really important to note as well as the relevance of the blog that you're actually getting the link from. So if you were sort of a blog talking about YouTube and YouTube marketing and how to make money on YouTube and you're getting a link from maybe a blog that talks about dogs, it's not gonna be worth as much. And there's also two different types of links as well. So there is the do follow link and also the no follow link. So basically the main difference is that the do follow link will actually pass that link juice, that voting power to your website to increase your ranking directly, right? Whereas a no follow link, it doesn't pass that link juice. So Google actually implemented this uh, years and years ago, back when a lot of people were actually doing sort of blog commenting and spamming blogs with their links. So what Google decided to do was implement the no follow link tag. So for example, if we right click this blog comment link and click on inspect, then what you're gonna notice, it's gonna show a no follow tag, right? So the no follow tag means that it doesn't pass any link juice to the website and it doesn't directly impact the rankings of the website, okay? So this is not to say that it's not important at all um, because it is sort of important for a natural backlinking profile um, as well as leaving blog comments is sort of gonna help you get some referral traffic back to your website, especially if it's a high traffic blog. And it's also gonna build a relationship with the blog owner as well, which is really, really important in terms of our backlinking strategy that we're gonna employ later. So what I wanna go through now is a specific uh, backlinking strategy for an affiliate marketing website. So this is really important because there's so many different strategies out there of getting backlinks, but what we're gonna do is we wanna um, have a process and have a strategy specific for a new website. So for our affiliate marketing website, we're gonna be implementing a three-step strategy to building backlinks for it. So one of the best ways to actually build backlinks is through guest posting on different blogs and websites. So what that basically means is that we're writing an article for another website, right? So for example, on this Forbes website over here, this is an article written by Erica, right? So she's a brand contributor from Deloitte and she's written this article about productivity and within the article, she's linked back to the Deloitte's uh, article. Okay, so that's getting a backlink through a guest post. So this is one of the best ways to actually get a backlink because it is also a contextual link um, it's a do follow link and it's also a relevant link that drives traffic back to your own website as well. So this is a really sort of powerful link that is gonna help sort of increase your rankings for your website. So before we actually go ahead and you know do guest posts and things like that, we do need to do step number one and two. So before we can actually uh, do guest posting, we need to build a very, very solid foundation and we also need to build relationships and things like that. That's why we need to do step one and two before we can actually go ahead and you know find different blogs and websites and ask if they accept any posts and things like that, right? Because with guest posting, we are basically contacting another website owner and asking them, can we submit our article on their website? So what we wanna do first of all is to sort of build our own portfolio first to actually show them the work that we can actually create so this can act like a practice for you guys. And also if you are writing a guest post for them, right, it's gonna drive some traffic back to, to our own website. Now, if our own website doesn't have any content on it, then you know there's no reason for people to actually stick on your website and read your content and eventually become fans of your website. And if they don't become fans of your website, they're not gonna come back and they're not going to, they don't have anything to link to, right? So they've got no articles to read, nothing to actually link to. So it's gonna be a waste if you actually, you know, create guest posts right now. First of all, I don't think you many people are gonna reply because people wanna see that you are a legitimate sort of online business before they actually work with you, okay? So it's gonna be a lot easier for you to collaborate with them if you do have some work to show for that, okay? So for our affiliate marketing website, before we sort of focused mostly on review content, comparison content, uh, basically affiliate marketing content. Now, generally with that type of content, it's not really uh, linkable, right? So most of the time when people are linking within an article, it's generally to a resource. So, or it could be like to different case studies, different statistics. Uh, it could be to uh, show people how to do something. It could be different case studies and things like that, 
So what we wanna do first of all is to create sort of informational content which is worth linking to and also the informational content um, that sort of helps people, right? Because when you actually help people, it's gonna uh, sort of help you build an audience as well and it gives an, a reason for people to come back. For example, uh, for my website, which is talking about uh, helping people how to start a YouTube channel, how to make money on YouTube, then I would also create content, for example, like how to get more views on YouTube, seven easy hacks, or I could do like how much do YouTubers earn. I would do like 21 real examples, basically content that people wanna read, right? And p content that people can actually link to, people can uh, share that type of content. Right, so people generally aren't gonna share like my tube body review or like vidIQ review or any type of review. So people normally link to resources. So for example, if I'm creating a video uh, showing you how to build backlinks and things like that, maybe I can't cover every single little strategy, but then I would be like, okay, maybe you can refer to this blog post or you can refer to this website, uh, you know, this video. So that's gonna, um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description and that's gonna help you know, build a backlink for that website. So that's what we wanna do first of all, we wanna build a very, very solid foundation. So you wanna build at least, uh, write at least you know, five informational blog posts, which are in depth and also well-researched, as well as finish off with your review and comparison content. So that's gonna take you a few weeks to actually complete that, um, but it's also very, very important, right? Because you need a portfolio to show people that uh, you can do great work and then it's gonna um, increase your chances that you're able to actually guest post for these websites, okay? So step number two, branding and engagement. So this is also a really important step. So what you wanna do uh, here is that you can actually create uh, relevant Web 2.0 profile links. So for example, that is like your Facebook pages. Um, so create a Facebook page, create a YouTube channel, Twitter uh, profile, and if you have any social media uh, profiles, then you can actually add your domain or your website link as a website or in your bio, okay? So most of the time that's gonna give you a backlink back to your website, and it is probably gonna be like a nofollow link, but it's gonna add some trust signals for your website, and it's gonna help uh, with your rankings as well initially, okay? So what you wanna do is you also want to uh, engage within the community as well. So once you actually create those pages, you wanna get some initial sort of referral traffic back, right? So one of the best ways to actually get that is to actually uh, engage in the community, for example, on Quora, right? So it's a question and answer type of website and people will ask questions and then a lot of people will actually answer those uh, questions with an answer. And here, for example, you know, how does TubeBuddy work? And then this person over here, he's explaining exactly how it works uh, with a link back to his video. Um, and a lot of these will have links back to their uh, different pages on their website as well. And that's gonna give you some initial referral traffic, okay? So it's also gonna help in terms of building a reputation for yourself on the internet because when you want to request you know, different blog owners to actually guest post on their website, you sort of wanna uh, make sure you have a brand, right? So when people actually check your, your website out and you know your social media accounts and different things like that, then they see that you are a real business, okay? So another thing that you should do is also do some blog commenting as well. So you can spend like 30 minutes a day doing you know, question and answers and also uh, doing blog comments and sort of engaging in the community. It could be like on, on YouTube as well or perhaps on you know, a, a person's Facebook page or maybe a person's Instagram page. You can start engaging there and sort of try and build a relationship with the you know, website owner and things like that. Okay, so when you actually reach out to them, then they're more likely to know who you are. So with the blog commenting, you can do that after you've found some relevant blogs that you sort of wanna potentially guest post on. Um, and I'll show you guys how to find the blogs in a minute, okay? So you can spend like 30 minutes per day doing these engagement activities. So basically what we wanna do right now is to, because no one knows our website, we sort of wanna get as many eyeballs on our website as possible. And this is something that you just need to do when you just first start out. So no matter what business that you do, uh, when you first start out, it's always gonna be a little bit harder. Uh, you sort of want to uh, do everything that you can. Okay, so for example, you could also post your articles and your blog post on your Facebook page, uh, on your Twitter pages as well, and things like that. So what we wanna do now is to find different blogs and different websites where we can actually guest post on. So for this task, we can use the Ahrefs Content Explorer tool, and we can navigate to the Content Explorer tab on the top, 
and we can enter in our topic. So for example, it could be a word or a phrase. Uh, for example, let's say for our website, we're gonna do how to make money on YouTube. Okay, and then do a search. So over here, we can scroll down and we can see the different search results for that key phrase. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the one page per domain because there's 26,000 pages and we just need the domain. Uh, we don't really need the duplicate and you know the same pages from that domain as well. So basically we can actually scroll down and what you're gonna notice is that a lot of these websites are quite popular. So for example, the domain rating is very, very high. They get a ton of traffic. And if you're like a new website, then it's probably not a great idea to actually go for these with your first guest post or your first few guest posts because they get a lot of traffic. That means they get a ton of requests for guest posts. So you sort of want to build up to that. Okay. So for example, the Shopify blog is very, very popular and you know, your chances are going to be quite low if you don't have like a, you know, relationship with, you know, one of their uh, staff and if you don't have much of a reputation yet. So what we can do is actually set in a filter. Um, before we do, we can actually set it to English first since we're going to be writing in English and we're going to add in a filter and set a domain rating. So we can set it to maybe 10 and to 50. Okay, so that's going to pull in the websites with a domain rating of 10 to 50. So what we could do is start sort of browsing through the different websites to see uh, if we actually want to, you know, submit our guest post on there because not every website we can actually do it um, because maybe it's not relevant, maybe it's a bit old, you know, maybe it's just not a website that you want to guest post on. So what we could do is just click on the different results like that and let's click through. Okay, and you can also do like a different search as well. Uh, so for example, we could do like how to get more views on YouTube and then we can click on search and then we can scroll down. We can click on the different results as well like that. So I basically opened up a few more different websites. Uh, what I want to show you now is basically the process of trying to find a good opportunity uh, for our guest post. Okay, so this one over here, our first website, this online world. So the first thing I've noticed over here is that, you know, this post is quite recent and that's definitely a good sign. Then the next thing that you want to look at is, you know, is the content on the website sort of um, something that you can produce, something that is relevant to your own niche? And also does the actual blog accept, you know, guest posts uh, on, their, on their website? Okay, so you can look through that. And normally on the bottom, you might actually find like a author's bio, for example, uh, over here. Okay, so this one is Ryan Scribner. He's a full-time YouTuber and also the founder of another blog. And he has written a guest post on this blog. Okay, so what you do wanna look at also is probably like the about page and check out the different uh, social media channels, see if they're actually active. If there are, then maybe you wanna shortlist it. And instead of actually contacting them, you know, directly, um, then maybe what you do want to do is try to engage with them uh, on their different social media platforms. So for example, uh, you would spend, you know, 30 minutes a day, you know, commenting on the content that they produce, perhaps on their Facebook page, maybe uh, retweeting their tweets and things like that. Okay. Or sharing their content on your Facebook page, right? So you do want to um, get them on your radar first, especially if it's like a a blog where it's like very, very personal, which I think, you know, this blog is right? It's very, very personal. And I think a lot of the blog posts, like he actually writes himself, some other blogs are a little bit different as well. So maybe I'll shortlist this one and, uh, spend more time to engage with this one. So we can look through some of the other ones as well. And we can look at, you know, is it relevant to my own niche as well? Sometimes, uh, this one, maybe perhaps I wouldn't maybe. So let's just click on the about us. You know, sometimes you can tell from the content, um, it's not like really like a personal blog. Uh, they just have a lot of different, uh, guest posts on there. Let's have a look. Okay. So this one, maybe not. So this one over here, it's like, I don't know, this is like a, maybe just sharing different content. So what you can actually do if you do come across something like this, right? You can go back over here and we can set and add a filter to like set words to maybe, uh, above 1000. Okay. So maybe it won't actually show, uh, results like this one over here. Okay. So that isn't good. This one over here, uh, 
you can take a look at it and see is it something that you want to uh, post on maybe not you know it doesn't seem like there's a lot of um you know traffic a lot of followers following this blog i don't know just the feel of it maybe i don't want to post on this one this one over here let's have a look is it like a real person so you can look through the content as well okay if it is then we would uh, click on the contact and see if we can get in touch with them. Um, this one over here, okay, 2016, it is a bit old. So let's click on the blog. Okay, so it seems like they haven't updated their blog uh, recently, so probably not worth trying to contact them. This one over here. Okay, so this one, I think, I'm pretty sure this one is actually like a private blog network uh, where they just sell SEO services. So we can click on some of these ones and check their blog post. You know, are they linking to, okay, so it's linking to a company website. This one linking to like a product service page. This one is, yeah, it does, it does look like you know, it does look like a private blog network. So, so I probably don't want to post on this one. Don't want to contact them. This one over here, perhaps, uh, maybe it's a bit old. You want to look through their different content. So maybe not this one, this one over here doesn't look too bad. It's like a real person and let's say, okay, so maybe this one. Okay. So that's what I like to uh, look for. Like, is it like a real person? Because normally if it's like, not like a real brand, then they won't have much of a following and you won't get much traffic to your website and things like that. So this one over here, you know, maybe, maybe not. I probably have to look a little bit deeper. So sometimes uh, what you're going to notice is that uh, if you scroll down to the very bottom, uh, you might actually see like a write for us page, right? So these ones openly accept guest post. Uh, if you do want a guest post on it, then what you do want to do is look through their different requirements. Okay. So if you can actually fulfill uh, those requirements, then I think it's a good idea maybe to to get in touch and you know contact them and submit your guest post. So websites like this, they might not have like a very uh, loyal following compared to a website like this where you know it's very very personal. But I think it might be still a good idea um, just to get some initial links to your website and to do some guest post uh, to start off with as well. Um, especially if you know they've laid it out for you, probably going to be a little bit easier. Okay, so this one over here as well, uh, I think it does have a right for us page. So what you can actually do is you can actually use Google as well. You can do like your topic, for example, YouTube plus, and then uh, right for us. Okay, so you can type that in and you can see some of these websites over here just by clicking into them. And they might have like a right for us page where you can actually submit like a guest post as well. Okay. So you have to look through this manually uh, yourself and you can also just shortlist this on like a Google doc or an Excel document. You can also sort of export it, uh, export it as well. For example, export it. So then you can just export it onto your computer and then you can actually use a tool called hunter.io and you can actually uh, search up their domain and try to find the emails that way. So you can actually bulk uh, import the domains. For example, let's say, uh, we take this domain over here, like sometimes they might not have a contact page or they might not get back to you. You can actually take the domain and you can use a tool like hunter.io and you can just put in their uh, domain over here and we can click on search and that's going to give you their uh, email addresses. So it's not going to work every single time, but sometimes it might work and you'll have a direct email to them. Okay, because sometimes the contact email might not go directly to their email. It might go to the junk mail or whatever it is. But if you're able to actually contact them, for example, maybe their personal assistant, uh, then it might actually uh, be quite effective um, in your outreach campaign. Okay, so I think personally, probably uh, doing it manually is probably the best uh, solution. Um, it is a bit tedious, but you get to sort of look through each website and sort of manually filter it rather than just, you know, export it in bulk. So that is pretty much it in terms of actually finding different uh, opportunities where you can actually guest post. So the next thing that I want to talk about is how to actually email them, right? So I'm going to give you guys a very, very simple template that you can use um, as a sample, right? So you could do like, Hey John, big fan of your work, especially X, Y, and Z post. I'm Hogan from HoganChua.com. I've written for 
and then maybe you can provide a few examples. You don't want to provide too many. Uh, you can also just provide uh, examples of your work if you haven't done any guest posts yet. And then you could say, I was wondering if you accept any guest post. If you do, let me know because I'll love to write for your blog, right? So very, very simple. And then you can include a few different ideas uh, that would work really well for their blog. Okay, so what I recommend is making sure that you've done your research on, you know, seeing what blog posts work well on their blog. And also, if you want to go the extra mile, you, then you can also do some keyword research as well, right? Because at the end of the day, they also want to get more traffic to their website, right? So if you actually have done the work um, to actually do some keyword research, then you can actually show them, you know, this is a great opportunity as well for you to actually get some more traffic. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to sort of set this as like a daily uh, process where you reach out to like a dozen uh, different websites because not everyone's going to get back to you. Okay, and then what you need to do is you want to make sure that you follow up. Okay, so follow up uh, with like a follow up email uh, to ask if they've received your email and things like that because sometimes they might just ignore it um, and you might have to try again. Okay. So make sure to not be like too pushy uh, in terms of, you know, getting guest posts. Sometimes they just don't want to. So that's fine. And you have to move on. And then later on, once you've built your portfolio, your reputation, then reach out again. Okay. So in terms of actually writing up your content, uh, so what I do recommend is obviously looking at their own requirements first. And if they don't have any requirements, make sure to ask them. Okay, so generally in terms of the links uh, back to your own website, you should only include one to two maximum. Okay, so depending on the length of your content, maybe if it's like more than like 2000 words, maybe you can link to it two times, but generally probably just one time. And then you can also link to maybe some external resources as well. Um, also make sure to ask them about that. Okay, so you could also link back internally to their own website. So what you could do is after you've written your guest post, then you could also look at the content on their on their blog and try to help them internal link uh, to their own website, right? Because that's going to help with help with their own on page SEO as well and help their own uh, pages to rank. OK, so you can do that. And then what you need to do is uh, make sure to not include any affiliate links unless they say you can. And you don't necessarily need to link directly back to your review page, right? So, so for example, I would do something like before I create a video, I always check out the competition by doing a general search on YouTube. If it looks like a decent opportunity, I will then do some keyword research. I normally use TubeBuddy for this purpose, and then I could link it to my TubeBuddy review. Okay, so sometimes that is maybe like on the borderline, you know, too commercial because it's linking back to my review. If it is, then I would probably link to maybe like another article on my website, for example, an article showing people how to actually do keyword research. And within that article, then I'll link to TubeBuddy. So what I mean is that I would have, let's say, a TubeBuddy review, and then I might have a how to do keyword research for YouTube, right? And then instead of linking directly to my review, I will link to this article first, okay? And then from this article, I'll link to this review. Right, so this is uh, internal linking, right? That's still gonna pass a little bit of link juice, um, but with guest posting, sometimes it can be a little bit, uh, you just don't wanna do that, right? You just don't wanna link directly to like a product page or like a service page. Um, sometimes you can uh, do that, uh, just make sure to ask them, okay? So that's pretty much all for guest post. Make sure you provide really great quality content and make sure to organize you know, all your images and screenshots and optimize all the image sizes for them. So you wanna make it as easy as possible for them to actually just publish that guest post so that in the future, then they'll like to work with you, right? And then once they've actually posted their guest post, make sure to actually follow up and engage with the comments if there is any comments so that you can actually get some referral traffic back to your website as well, okay? So in the beginning, it's gonna be quite hard and quite manual in terms of actually building backlinks and doing guest posting and creating content. But after a little while, then your content will start ranking on Google, right? And that's gonna naturally get you some more uh, people on your website. And if they like your content, then they're gonna link back to you, right? And then that basically means that you're gonna get more backlinks and that's gonna increase your rankings, right? So then, once that starts going, then you're gonna start getting more and more natural backlinks to your website and everything else is gonna start ranking as well, right? So basically the more people that come onto your website, then the more opportunity you're gonna get 
for natural backlinks. And then you don't have to do as much guest posting anymore because a lot of people are going to link to you naturally, right? So this is like the flywheel effect. And if you actually read a little bit more about the flywheel effect, uh, Jim Collins actually discusses this in his book. I think it was like good to great. And he talks about Amazon's flywheel effect. So basically he talks about how uh, you put in a lot of effort in the beginning and until one day the flywheel starts to turn, right? So you're going to put in a lot of initial effort and then once the flywheel starts to turn, then it's going to be really, really easy for you. And all you need to do is to produce really great content. So this is Amazon's flywheel. And basically what drives growth is very great customer experience. So that's going to drive more people to actually use the website. So more traffic to the website. And because there's a lot of people on the website, then sellers will be attracted to actually put their products and list it on the website. That's going to increase selection and that's going to increase customer experience and that's going to drive lower prices and that's going to sort of drive growth uh, naturally, right? So for example, for our own flywheel is that we're going to pr produce really great content, uh, but initially we do have to get people on our website first, right? To so get some fans and subscribers. And then once we do have fans and subscribers, then we might get links naturally, okay? So getting links naturally is always gonna beat you trying to always try to obtain links, right? So that's going to increase our rankings and visibility for our website. That's gonna get more people to read our really great content. And then it's gonna get more links and then we're gonna get more rankings. And yeah, so that's gonna sort of uh, drive growth for our own website, right? Just like if you were to open a restaurant, um, you have really great service, really great food and really great value. Initially, there might not be a lot of people to our restaurant and we have to do a lot of advertising, marketing for the restaurant. But then once people actually come to our restaurant, they really love the product, then they recommend them to their friends and then their friends will recommend them to their friends and it's going to keep on going and that's going to drive growth for the restaurant. Okay, same thing for our website. Uh, initially, it's going to take a lot of manual work, but eventually it's not going to be as uh, tedious and all you really need to focus in on is to create really great content and uh, that's going to drive your growth. Okay, so that's pretty much it for off-page SEO. Okay, so we're pretty much finished with this free course uh, showing guys how to create an affiliate marketing website. What I want to do now is just to give you some final tips to help you guys succeed faster with your website. So the first tip is what I recommend is actually targeting long tail keywords for your website's content, right? So when you're actually doing keyword research and you're using Ahrefs, what I recommend is using the sort of filter tool on the top. So what we can actually do is we can actually filter the keywords by using the word count and we can target long tail keywords by selecting key phrases which are five uh, words or more. So we can click on apply. Now generally with these keywords, they are gonna be lower competition and you're gonna be able to actually create content which is more targeted. So that's going to give you a more chance to actually rank your website quicker, especially if you're a new website, you don't really want to target key phrases, which are too short because they're going to be higher competition and it's not as targeted. So you want to focus on low competition keywords first uh, until your website builds some more authority and trust, then you can actually go ahead and target more competitive terms. Make sure to get a few sales first, and then you can really, once you actually believe you can actually get results, then you're going to you know, take more action, then you're going to get even more results. So you can also set the volume over here to maybe up to a thousand and click on apply. And you can also set the keyword difficulty to maybe up to 30, right? So go for low competition first, then aim higher later. So tip number two is to be early. So when you're actually choosing a niche, I highly recommend choosing a niche that you are very interested in, because if you're interested in a niche, then when a new product comes out, generally you'll know about it, right? then you're able to actually create content earlier than everyone else. That means that your website is gonna rank a lot easier because there's gonna be no competition at all. So that's really, really important. I think within sort of anything that you do in business, if you're early, then you're always gonna have this early movers advantage, right? That's gonna be the same thing for an affiliate marketing website. So for example, you could do like, you know, maybe old product versus the new version of product, should you actually upgrade, right? So that's a very, very, targeted uh, key phrase that you can actually use uh, when you're actually doing new product uh, reviews and things like that. So tip number three, if you guys want to get fast results, what I recommend is actually turning your blog post into a video. So what you can actually do is if it's like a product, especially like a digital product, you can create like a tutorial sort of review and you can go through all of these points in video. 
You can talk about the pros and the cons. You can show people the features, how to use it, uh, what you like and what you don't like by doing a screen recording, just like I'm showing you right now in this screen recording and tutorial. For PC, you can use Camtasia to record as well as edit. And if you're using Mac, then you can use ScreenFlow to uh, record your screen and also edit as well. And if you guys are really serious about it, then you're probably gonna need a mic. And for that, I recommend the Blue Yeti mic. And you can also get the Blue Yeti Nano as well if you don't want something that's you know really bulky, All right? So this one is really, really bulky and really big, probably not gonna be great for traveling. This one is really, really small and really awesome as well. So if you actually upload onto YouTube, then all you need to do is, you know, make sure you create a really nice thumbnail. Uh, make sure to actually do some keyword research as well by using uh, TubeBuddy or VidIQ. And you can put in a title, try to make it a little bit different uh, from other people, put in a description, and you can also put in your link. So for example, the uh, review link in the description or in the comment section, that's gonna get your backlink back to your website and it's probably gonna get you some referral traffic as well. That's gonna help your website rank on Google. And yeah, if you're creating a video, you're able to showcase the product a lot better as well. And if you're showing your face, then you're gonna be able to build some trust and you don't have to build any backlinks to your video. So that means it's gonna be a lot faster for you to actually get results, especially if you have really good watch time for your videos, all right? So I'm not gonna to talk too much about it, but creating a video is just you know so awesome because you're able to also build a brand. And when you are reaching out to get guest post, then it's gonna be easier for you as well. So tip number four is repetition and execution. So in this video, I've shown you guys how to do everything just once. So for example, I've shown you guys how to set up the website once, I've shown you guys how to use the builder once, I've shown you guys how to create content once, how to do keyword research once, how to uh, actually add that content onto your website one time. So the thing is, uh, you've learned everything one time, right? But to actually get results, you've got to actually repeat those actions over and over again. Just like if you were to, let's say, uh, go to the gym or something like that and you wanna get fit. So you've got to go on the treadmill you know, every single day, like for weeks and months until you get really great results. So the same thing with your affiliate marketing website, you gotta execute on a daily basis. And what I recommend is having sort of like a daily process so take what you've learned from this video and you know write out your own daily process of content creation, of keyword research and things like that. So obviously you can you know group it into like, for example, you could do keyword research one week and then maybe the next week you could just batch create the content and things like that. And then the week after you can you know edit the content, right? The concept of affiliate marketing, the concept of passive income, it's super easy to explain and it's really easy just to watch a few videos, but to actually get results, you've got to take action, okay? So that's gonna be super, super important in terms of being successful online. So tip number five, and the last tip is to focus. So make sure to focus on your readers, make sure to focus on the people that you are trying to help. So create content to help those people, and that's all you should really just focus on, right? Don't focus on other businesses, don't focus on e-commerce, don't focus on you know, drop shipping, don't focus on Amazon FBA, don't focus on anything else other than helping your readers, other than creating the best reviews possible. I think this is the biggest trap that most beginners fall in, uh, is to chase a lot of different sort of making money online opportunities and not just sticking to one until you're successful. So I'm not saying that you can't uh, do those ventures later, but until you actually start making money and until you make stable income from your affiliate marketing website, don't go and do other things, right? It's just like, choosing a sport. Let's say you choose tennis, let's say you choose basketball. You don't really wanna switch from that to like swimming and then to like other sports as well because it's gonna take you time to actually learn the skills required to be actually good at it, to be able to actually earn an income. So this is gonna be the same with affiliate marketing and your affiliate marketing website. So yeah, so make sure to focus and don't get distracted by you know what is hot and what is trending at the moment focus on your readers and your customers. So that is pretty much it for this free course on showing you guys how to make an affiliate marketing website. So what I'm gonna do is hopefully within three to six months, I'll update you guys with the progress of my website. So I didn't really wanna reveal it right now because I don't want people like copying exactly what I do and things like that. Um, so yeah, so if you have any questions, drop it in the comment section down below. So hopefully I can create a few more videos to show you how to add in a few more things to sort of fully customize your affiliate marketing website. 
um, but I'm not really sure you know how this video is actually gonna do so this is a very very long video like a four hour video but it literally covers everything you need to know to create a thousand dollar per month or even more affiliate marketing website yeah do let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this video and make sure to give it a thumbs up if you found any value in it it really helps me out because it did take a long long time to actually put together for you guys so thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next video